So today is day five. And uh, day five builds on, on the first victorious four days we had since uh, Saturday, the 6th of October. So today we're going to have uh, great, great uh, reports. Uh, we're going to have a report from the office of the chair, from uh, Ashid Prop, from uh, uh, Abdeb, and from uh, the uh, national, uh, the Secretary General, I guess, so it's going to be great. So we want just uh, to recognize first our Chairman of Mali Stella, because uh, every day, every day of this Congress is a day of a leadership. And it's uh, leadership, as you know, uh, that uh, the chairman has worked on uh, since the founding of this organization. So once again, I just want to say I have the privilege to reconvene uh, the Congress for day five. We are winning. We are winning. We are winning. We are winning. Oh, Uhuru. So I'm trying to see if, if Makeda is here. Yes, I see you now. <laughs> so I want to welcome up our introductory, our opening culture. I have Makeda coming in, and her stage name is Sarah B. Tonin, and she's going to give us a little bit of poetry. Uhuru. <laughs> This piece is entitled, Do You Know Why They Smile? Do you know why they smile? Annoying green spread across their faces. Early morning greetings akin to the silent shattering shrieks we hear when the cat's cat is on fire. Methany and the rest of them, please this punch on Monday mornings for God knows what. Ah, that's right. Because they are the bosses, the judges, the whites to your blacks, the ones who rule the world, excessively verbose and senility written Neanderthals in seersucker suits, lean back in swivel chairs, casually negotiating your fate. A fate of which they will never feel the pre pressure looming. They smile because their most urgent concern lies in the hands of those who haven't a clue that they possess such power. They smile, Kool-Aid wide, with a thinking unbeknownst to the majority. They rejoice inside for being in on the big joke. The lie they deny is it's bold in plain sight. Privilege, that's right. The grin confirms the feeling that they will never have to contend, not for real, as they carve out victories from mediocrity and off of others' efforts. Bending rules are simply making them up as they go, legit only because they said so. Shit, think about that. Legit, only because they said so. Wouldn't you smile too? Wouldn't know what to do with that type of power. So their pastime hobby and preoccupation centers around keeping and making it seemingly omnipotent. Like Mike said, ain't no breaking even and they were sure they scared you enough to keep you from walking boldly away from the game. Can't get around, over, or through it as they scoff at your attempts to simply talk yourself into it, coyly revealing teeth polished in your psychological oppression. The smirk they sport is the catch-22 they got waiting for you just on the other side of any solve you find to this convoluted puzzle. Oh yeah, they smile as they drift away on holidays, spent on yachts, sailing on waves of the mingled blood and sweat of our familiars. They smile because hell, why not? Somebody should. And who's got more reason? Who should be toothy and broad? No one if not them. They've gifted themselves with the world and the rights to everything in it. They indeed are happy. We. We bear our teeth in more of a grimace tending to laugh to keep from crying as a byproduct coping mechanism for being relegated to inherently reside on the wrong side of life, as it were, as it seems. To uninterested onlookers, it just seems our smile lost its way, took its own ungrateful direction, arching at the top, turning the corners of our mouths down instead of up. As the gravity of the polarity of this situation provides clarity, you really want to know why they smile? 
They smile because our sorrow and poverty has funded their prosperity and positivity. They smile because we frown. But as they must now unask what they've amassed at our expense, and we unearth access to our very birthright and natural co national confidence, guess who'll have the last laugh? Whose turn is it to smile now? One settler? One bullet! Uhuru. I like that chant. Let's do it again. One settler. One settler. One settler. One bullet. Uh settler, settler. Settler, settler. All right. I'm going to turn that to a song. That's right. One sellout. One bullet. One sellout. One bullet. Bullet, bullet. Bullet, bullet. Sellout, sellout. We're recording this. We got to get the sound bite for some music at some point. <laughs> Somebody got to record it. Uhuru. Thank you so much, Sarah B. Tonin, for that poem. And uh, I think we all appreciate that. Woke us up a little bit, get us in the right frame of mind for our fifth Congress. Let's get it. <laughs> we smiling today. We smiling today because this is a part of African history that's going to get us free. Yes, yes. So next, I want to bring up uh, Ekenge Mayele, Chief of Staff of the Chairman's Office, Chairman Omar Lechichela, <laughs> uh, and the Project Director for the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations, the Coordinator of Chairman Omali's Office, uh, and Worldwide Tour. She makes sure that all things underneath the chairman are ex executed with complete detail. And so she's here to carry out his task, and also just to make sure that the, the chairman's office runs smoothly. We want to welcome uh, King A to the stage to give the Office of the Chair report. Uhuru. <laughs> Good morning, comrades. Um, my name, as has already been stated, is Ikinge Maele, and I'm the Chief of Staff for Chairman Amalia Shetela. I want to first recognize my leadership, Chairman Amalia Shetela, as well as Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, who's played an instrumental role in helping, to, helping me to understand what my role is as the Chief of Staff, because if um, some of you probably remember that when I came here, I was the chairman's administrative assistant. Um, and I'm going to be passing that torch. To open our presentation, we have a short video compilation that highlights some of the work and travel of Chairman Omalia Shetela over the past five years, which is coordinated by Uhuru Tours. Uhuru. <laughs> Uhuru, Uhuru. Uhuru. Comrades, comrades, brothers and sisters. I'm on a mission. And the only response, the magnificent response that came from the Uhuru movement. Hey, hey. A whole black nation has to be put together as a black army. Since our party's last Congress, Chairman Omali Ishitela, leader of the African nation, has been traveling the world, spreading African internationalism. In 2015, Chairman Omali Ishitela made his first visit to Moscow at the invitation of the anti-globalization movement of Russia. First of all, I'd like to establish the fact that I am the chairman of a revolutionary organization. From the African People's Socialist Party, we address this international community of peoples also struggling for freedom, independence, and self-determination from imperialist and colonial domination. In 
September of the same year, he was invited back to Russia for an experts conference themed the Dialogue of Nations and the Right of Peoples to Self-Determination and the Building of a Multipolar World. Uh, hello, comrades. Uh, today, anti-globalization movement of Russia presents an interview with our comrade from African People's Socialist Party. Can you tell us, uh, please, something about your party, about your activity? We are a revolutionary uh, political party uh, that was born uh, in the United States, but that now exists in various continents, including Africa, Caribbean, throughout Europe, in Belgium, France, Germany, England, and Sweden. In 2018, he made the longer way to trip to occupied Azania to consolidate the international work and forces on the ground. In a local market, the chairman sums up the question of the nation. Chairman Omali Ishatella was also invited to be the keynote speaker at the 25th anniversary of Irie FM Radio in Kingston, Jamaica, the largest annual Garvey Festival in the world, where he addressed an audience of over 8,000 like people. In the audience. Yeah. I'm working for Marcus Garvey. Yeah. My objective is to build a revolutionary movement stretching across the globe. among the first on the ground in Ferguson, Missouri. Unlike opportunists who went there to capitalize on the masses, he built real organization in the form of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. America does not treat us like citizens. It treats us like subjects, like a colonized population. When I saw those, that military equipment here in Ferguson, it, I've seen it all over this country, but it's the same stuff that you see they use in Afghanistan. It takes extreme violence to keep an oppressed people who built this country. All the wealth that we see in this country was built of black labor. So it takes extreme violence to be able to keep us living in these circumstances that they have imposed on us, right? I don't, I don't want to hear any criticism of these young Africans. No, 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 no. It is, it is because these young people stood up and they fought. They fought back like you're supposed to fight when you are occupied, when your community is occupied, and they're shooting you down in the streets. Well, you are supposed to fight back. Uh, he cuts his tongue and he bleeds and he thinks he's really having a good day and he drinks and he licks and he licks and of course he's drinking. When the state refused to indict Darren Wilson for the murder of Mike Brown, he initiated the Black People's Grand Jury to give the people a voice. We are not helpless in the face of decisions made by people that would victimize us, that would make mothers responsible for burying their children as teenagers. And so this grand jury, uh, taking its charge very seriously, came back uh, with the determination that Darren Wilson must be indicted for first degree murder. In 2017, as chair of the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations, Chairman created the Electoral Campaign School, a training to provide the African working class strategies to seize power within the electoral arena. Featuring noted civil rights attorney John Dew, founding Black is Back member Glenn Ford, and New York State Assemblyman Charles Barron. 
it's historic. That's why I want you to, to, to see it, because, because this brother was uh, in the trenches at really critical moments in our history. We've talked about the Summer Project in Mississippi. We've talked about uh, people like Fannie Lou Hamer. Uh, we didn't speak so much about people like Bob Moses. Uh, my name is Columbae, and I am from Ferguson, Missouri area. When Ferguson happened, I was not in political life at all. Probably the most political thing I did is go out and vote for Obama. This year, the second school was held in St. Louis, Missouri. So 1965, they granted the Voting Rights Act. Now everybody can vote. But at the same time frame, what they're doing is killing off the revolution. Malcolm is assassinated. Not too long after King is assassinated. Fred Hampton is assassinated. So now that you can vote, you got nothing to vote for. In 2016, a 30-day cadre development school was held in St. Petersburg, Florida at a Quaba Hall made up of members from all over the world. 30 days during the month of July 2016, the African People's Socialist Party will be training 50 of the best sons and daughters of Africa to be cadre in the struggle to unite and liberate Africa and African people everywhere. The party will host African people throughout Africa, the U.S., Europe, and the Caribbean at its Apollo Hall headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. At the 2017 plenary to the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Omalia Shatella defined the way forward for the African nation. I think it was really important to go through that report, uh, to lay out the foundation for all of the work that we do and how we understand so much. This is the first time uh, that I think we've done a political report or a discussion on what the future looks like and what uh, African state power, workers' power uh, looks like and can look like. And for over 40 years, he has been leading the work for reparations to the African nation. For the past five years, he has been the keynote speaker at annual Days in Solidarity with African People, now to be known as a day of reparations to African people. Now, when we say unity to reparations, we're giving you a reason for that. We say, we say solidarity. You've got to get on board. I don't need any damn charity. I need somebody who's in solidarity with the struggle to overturn these chains that's on me and African people around the world. Just been exposed that the FBI has created something that they call black identity extremists. That's domestic terrorists. And we said they've got, if they've named it, they got a program already. If you read about them, they're talking about it, they already have the program. And it's already at work. But they will not be victorious this time as they were in the 1960s. And part of the reason they will not be victorious is because we are in this room today. To increase the chairman's visibility throughout the world, a social media campaign was launched highlighting quotations from Chairman Omali Ishitella. The Little Black Book has been translated in five languages under the direction of Elikia Ngoma. Quotations from Chairman Omali Ishitella. It speaks to us directly. This was cool, but this is ice cold. In addition to traveling the world, spreading African internationalism, the chairman has officiated four weddings and commitment ceremonies. Kyun Gozi, Binamu, Steve Swaggart, and Yejide Oranmila, Aisha Fleary, have invited all of us here today to participate in the joyous occasion that is their wedding. While it is a ceremony that connects us to one another as husband and wife, it is also a ceremony that connects us to our community, our African nation, and the rest of humanity. Perform 
performed the naming ceremonies of over 50 men, women, and children of the African nation. Right. Uh, the fact is that when somebody else can name you, they have imposed their own consciousness on you. And so you end up being named for your oppressor. And it's very difficult for you to even trace your history. You go looking for your history and you're looking for Jones or Williams or something to that effect. And then what you find is a white man at the end of the line. Over 260 Omali taught me Sunday studies. Hello, comrades. I, I would like uh, for us to have a really uh, lively and thorough discussion around this question. I'm hoping that people uh, will raise uh, questions about things that are not so clear. That should be able to raise up issues uh, for what it is that the African people uh, uh, have to accomplish or demand uh, as political objectives in order to move forward. Now, we're having this discussion at this moment in part because, uh, as I mentioned, there are a lot of people who've been thrust into motion, and uh, many of them have been attracted to the party reasonably. Uh, because the party is engaged in so many different fronts, and we uh, have an incredible track record, uh, more than 40 years of activity. We've developed institutions. We have uh, have newspaper and radio uh, and uh, in other kinds of institutions that clearly demonstrate what it is that we are about. And traveled 103,147 miles, over three times around the world and counting. He is also the keynote at the annual Marcus Garvey Legacy Cruise. We create the power in the struggle, the movement itself. We create the power. That's what the rule of French is about. That's what the rule of foods and things like that is about. They create our own economic capacity and then forge to the extent we can other components of self-government. Having a support staff enables the chairman to carry out his role as the leader of the African nation. My name is Betty Jo Soto. See, my role is, as you can see, the director of the Omali Yishik Southern Resource Library, and it's, yeah, it's an honor. We need these institutions, and the education that we're currently getting in our schools is just um, to keep us colonized. Uhuru. My name is Anika Ngoma, and I am the administrative assistant for Chairman of Mali Ishitaba. My role in the office is to work closely with the chief of staff um, to ensure that you know chairman is always prepared. I do have other positions in the office, such as leading the Marcus Garvey Legacy Cruise, uh, which is an annual funders cruise for the African Socialist International. And I am the choir director of the Freedom Mass Choir, and what we do is we perform songs of resistance, struggle, um, really actively engaged in changing a lot of what's defined as culture in the African community. My name is Ikinge Maile, and I'm the chief of staff. How may I help you? Being responsible for um, the calendar, the movement of the leader of a free African nation is no small undertaking. Uhuru. My name is David Land. My position in the office of the chair is director of media relations, and I have the job, the task, and the honor of controlling uh, the image of Chairman Omar Yeshitela in the media, use his image as a way to define um, what the future looks like uh, for African people. Uh, it's going to be better moving forward. We are winning. Uhuru.
Uhuru comrades. <laughs> um, just to, I really want to appreciate uh, my comrades here for uh, the work that they put in to put this video together. Um, I want to say that before I started this, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. <laughs> I just said we should do a video. It was two weeks before <laughs> we were supposed to be done. And the director of media relations said, I'd never done this either. <laughs> but it just, uh, to me, demonstrates uh, what we can do, uh, one, when we're united uh, for a, a common goal, which is, one, to free our people, uh, two, to exemplify what it is that the chairman asked of us, which is to be leaders, and that's that we work together, um, and we got it done. So I hope you appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And to say that um, as a chief of staff, it's not only my responsibility to work closely uh, with the chairman to ensure that his calendar is maintained, uh, it's also to interact with the National Central Committee uh, to ensure that uh, the directives that the chairman uh, would ask the movement to carry out are adhered to as well. And I also have the responsibility of ensuring that his, at his office is adequately staffed with all of the parts, pieces, and personnel uh, that he requires in order for him to lead the African nation. I want to start by bringing forward uh, the newly, the new administrative assistant for the office of the chair, Alikia Ngoma. Uhuru. I am Alikia Ngoma, the Administrative Assistant for Chairman Omali Yeshitala. As stated in the video, part of my role as the Chairman's Administrative Assistant is to ensure that the Chairman is on top of his various projects, as well as remains prepared for the numerous meetings that he either leads or participates in. I was promoted to this role within the last month after having been the Chairman's uh, Director of Media Relations. I'm currently engaged in receiving training for my new role, um, while also providing training to the chairman's new director of media relations. Um, part of my role as the administrative assistant is to manage Uhuru Tours, which is the entity that coordinates the chairman's travel. Um, coming immediately after the Congress, um, you know, the chairman will be participating as the keynote speaker for the Days and Reparations to African Peoples Tour. And um, right after that, we will also begin laying out what the 2019 Uhuru Tours calendar looks like for the chairman, Uhuru. My name is David Lance, and I'm the director of media relations for Chairman Omar Yesatella. Um, as also stated in the video, um, I've been tasked with developing the image of Chairman Omar Yesatella in the media. Um, what that means specifically is developing programs and projects, as well as communicating information and ideas specific to the needs and requirements of the chairman, as well as the entire office of the chair. I function as the custodian of the connection between Chairman Omal Yeshitela's office and the media, whether inside or outside of the organization. It is my job to create and capture favorable images of Chairman's activities to advance the interests of the African People's Socialist Party, the vehicle that advances the struggle for liberation of the entire African nation. As stated by the, chair, the Chairman earlier during the 7th Congress, Prince has someone to approve every image published of him, and that is what I'll be doing for the Chairman. The job is also to improve upon and further the existing POA created by Alika Ngoma while she was uh, the director of media relations, um, which included a posting schedule for social media as well as posting guidelines. Uh, so to make sure that all of the things posted um, to chairman social media also include political education, um, calls for donations and things of that nature. Um, also the creation of a media relations team 
to expand the platforms that Chairman O'Malley Yeshatella exists on, um, such as Twitter and YouTube, because right now we mostly use Facebook and, mostly Facebook. <laughs> um, so with that POA as my starting point, my plan is to further develop the science of the image of Chairman O'Malley Yeshatella, because like revolution, there's a science and an art to what is ultimately the branding of Chairman O'Malley Yeshatella as a leader of the African nation. So coming out of this 7th Congress, I will lay out exactly what the image of Chairman Amalia Chatella should look like. I will have defined for the various offices of the African People's Socialist Party as well as outside organizations. Um, I will also be laying out what that does not look like in the form of a press kit that would include specific images of the chairman that will be used for press releases and it will include specific directions on how to use those images. Even in the short time that I've been in the office, I've offered suggestions that have improved the image of the chairman. Uh, for example, during one of uh, the Sunday studies of O'Malley taught me, um, I noticed that chairman was wearing a gray jacket. Um, to the average person, that might not be a noticeable or significant thing, but as a photographer, we wouldn't want to photograph chairman in front of a wall that's the same color as his skin and his hair. So it'll be small details like that that'll approve upon how we capture the chairman and make him look as good as possible. Um, I would also like to say that although I'm relatively new to the office of the chair, I have assumed the director of media relations position with a deep understanding of the importance of media and what that means for African people and our liberation. Because through the science of African internationalism, I understand that part of revolution, part of revolution is African working class seizing control of the state media apparatus. And if our aim is self-determination, the work that I will be doing will be controlling the narrative through the image of Chairman Amalia Sotella. As of today, my work has included social media postings, um, O'Malley taught me propaganda and promotion items, um, and postings on Facebook and YouTube. Um, the most significant project that I've done thus far is um, this presentation that you all have just seen. Um, <laughs> thank you. So um, through the process of even this Congress, um, coming out of this, I will have um, not only images and material to use for the chairman, um, you know, to create a, poorly, a portfolio of such. Um, my overall goal will be to use his image to reach more of the masses and to bring more of the masses into revolution. Uh -huh. Trying to say I'm short. Uhuru comrades. Iswele tu. Africa. E Africa. Iswele tu. Uhuru. My name is Betty Jo Soto. As you've seen in the video, I'm the project director of the OYRL, which uh, the Omali Yeshatela Resource Library is a revolutionary library. It was established as a way of Africans to analyze, sum up, and overturn the contradictions of our colonized existence and to bring to us, bring us into political life as a way to emerge, as a way for us to emerge as a free and self-determined, self-governing people. Chairman speaks of creating revolutionary intellectuals, which is what this library will do. Much of the works in the library have contributed to Chairman's development of the theory of African internationalism. To date, we've sorted, shelved, categorized, and inventoried over 1,500 books, which est we've established over 25 categories from an in African internationalist perspective, such as Africa, Black in America, counterinsurgency, and other subjects such as political science, revolution, and so on. A set of protocols and policies for the use of the library were developed to ensure that the contents of the library of the, o, of the OYRL, the library, are not removed. It is strictly a resource library and not a, li not a lending library. Library. <laughs> we will also be collaborating with the Department of Agitation and Propaganda to consolidate a process for archiving and digitalizing photos, speeches, and videos of the chairman's works. This will give patrons access to 50 years of the APSP 
African People's Socialist Party under the leadership of our chairman, Omali Yeshitela. The contradiction is that the soft opening has not occurred. It was planned, but has not happened. To overturn the contradiction, I will be assembling my team that I have recently acquired within the last three months to create a solid plan for the soft opening, which, will it be, which we anticipate to occur on or before November 25th. We will be consolidating hours of operation, staffing, and training protocols. As a teacher, my vision for the library moving forward is to, pro is to provide various programs such as book clubs, tutoring, political education, and literary arts using literature to create works of art. In addition to my primary work, I am also the membership coordinator for the Black is Back Coalition for Social, for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations, which is currently preparing for November 3rd and 4th mobilization on the White House. And as the membership coordinator, I want to direct everyone to the OOTC table to register for this historical event. And I just want to say, um, I love you, Chairman DC Ona, and my people. And it has given me life. The African People's Socialist Party has given me life. Um, yeah, Uhuru. This uh, is the staff of the office of Chairman Omalia Shatella. Uh, to say that we are missing one component, which is Comrade Ayana Asante, who could not be here with us for health reasons, who will be the economic development specialist for the office. Um, she is new to the work and new to the party. Um, so we will be working with her to further develop what economic development can look like uh, for the office of the chair, and I'm being told that I have one minute. I hope that you uh, appreciate it, our presentation. Um, Uhuru. <laughs> want to say when I first met at Kenge Mayele she scared me <laughs> she still do. she one of the toughest women you ever gonna find she called me one time like listen comrade <laughs> you gotta make sure the work happen I was like okay <laughs> this is chairman's chief of staff when you see her coming, get in line. <laughs> um, so at this moment, we're going to open it up for any questions that anyone would have for the office of the chairman uh, and the presentations that you uh, just saw. I have some questions, too, but I'll let other folks ask them first. to appreciate this report um, it was it brought me to tears this was amazing and I just want to salute um, the chief of staff of Kenya she is a tough cookie <laughs> you know but um, <laughs> but in a, but it's, it's, it's a compliment it's, I really appreciate it you know um, I really do appreciate it and just to say that I just have an appreciation for the party because I remember um, the conversation about building the chairman's office and here we are at the seven Congress and seeing like the work moving forward. And we know everything was, is without contradiction, but we have to move. You know what I'm saying? We have to move. The work is primary. Um, and so I just really appreciate this report and salute everybody in chairman's office. This is a very important um, post, um, our chairman in his office. And, um, you know, David, you know, you know, welcome to the chairman's office. 
and over social media because we have to put chairman out there in a real way. You know, um, the world have to know that this is the leader of the African nation and we are doing a disservice to the people when we don't do that. And so I'm just really excited to see the next five years in his office. And I can go on and on about Alikia and how dynamic you are in every role and everything that you touch and you breathe on um, is amazing. And I really appreciate you too, comrade, and um, Betty Soto, you as well. You know, um, again, I really salute this office, Uhuru. Uhuru, comrades. Um, first of all, I want to show my appreciation as well. Um, being in Florida, I get to see y'all whenever I come up, and I've grown to really enjoy y'all and all your personalities as well as your criticisms and developing um, cadre in our party. And this question is more for um, Comrade David. Um, uh, if you could speak to the difficulties in managing uh, revolutionaries uh, media presence in a colonial atmosphere which aims to just slander him. I would really appreciate that as someone from agitation and propaganda. Uhuru. Um, Robert, I think um, the approach for me, uh, the most important thing is is always making sure I'm getting the political line right. And if I'm approaching things um, using the science that has been developed for for decades at this point, you know there is no there is no losing. And what I'm putting out is not in contention with anything, and it's not to 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 ever be on the defense. Um, we're on the offensive. We're putting out what we want to put out, um, which is African internationalism. It's the truth, and it, it can be refuted. So um, you know that's how I approach that uh, in terms of trolls and anybody who doesn't, who is not on board with what it is we're doing, you know, they, they don't matter. They, they really don't exist. So, you know, that's the approach to that. Uh -huh. Can I touch the mic or is that against the, okay, it's against the rules. Because <laughs> she gave me a look at death yesterday. I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't touch the mic, okay. So question, okay, for David. So that means that in order to control the chairman's image that we should be contacting you, let's say, for example, if we're having an annual con convention and we wanna say the chairman is gonna sp do a speech and we want his image, we gotta contact you for his image? That's correct. Okay. And then also, also about, you know, this is a, a huge task and I think one that has been in the coming, this is also for David, and I guess the whole office is gonna have a role in making this happen, but expanding the chairman beyond, it, like in the world, yeah. And I, I know that we, in a meeting that everybody was not privy to, was suggested that maybe t chairman could be uh, registered to do a TED talk, you know? And, um, and do more news interviews. I, it, I know this is not, this is like way beyond, you probably don't have this on your POA, but I'm just saying that in order for us to get the chairman out there, we need to also be thinking about getting into like the bourgeois media because that's where these other fools are. That's right. And they have a lot more visibility and even though their message is horrible. And I think that African internationalism wins, I know that African internationalism wins people when they hear it. and. So just doing more news spots and more media in general outside of um, outside of our media, which is great, and the Facebook, which is also great. But we also need to be able to touch those bases because when my family members talked to me, they were just like, well, how come we don't know about the horror movement? I'm like, you do know about the horror movement because I'm in the horror movement and I tell you about the horror movement and the chairman. I share his stuff on my page. You do not share it. So don't even sit up here talking about how come you don't know about the her movement, and so everybody is a part of making that sharing and making the chairman a household name, but I also think that something like a TED Talk or, or something like that would be um, really important. And so I, I, that's a question is maybe you can say why you thought about that, and then also before you answer that, ask Betty Joe, so I can get off um, 
So about the library, so after the initial setup of the library, what what is the, so it's just gonna be mostly just, um, just being the curator of the library, and um, I know you said something about the Burning Spear studies or book clubs and things like that. So can you just say a little bit more about just the vision of the library after the initial launch? And um, yes, Uhuru. Uhuru, uh, just to answer your question about um, moving chairman into, I guess what you would classify as mainstream media, that is um, a part of the POA. Um, and my vision is to um, just package his image because what he, what you already, what you do, Chairman, is already dynamic. Uh, it just has to be captured um, for people to see in a particular way. Um, although it wasn't created while I was in the office of the chair, but um, the This America video was um, one way that I foresee doing that is to merge African internationalism with things that are already um, captivating the attention of the masses. Um, that's so that'll be my strategy. Um, for that. Um, also, I mentioned it briefly, a, a, a press kit. So um, celebrities, people who interact with the media a lot, they have press kits. So as opposed to um, people using photos from their phone or photos that they've taken or pulling old photos and things like that, there will be a particular set of images to use for the chairman uh, with directions on how to use them uh, because um, we wouldn't want to use the chairman, you know, uh, <laughs> doing one of his uh, poignant, you know, um, intense things when he's, um, we want to match the imagery with um, what the chairman is actually speaking to. Uh, so my plan is to, is to really define that for everybody in the party um, and even for people who he'll interact with outside of the organization. Uhuru, um, if I think the question that you asked is correct. Um, my response is that as a teacher, I want to train someone um, to pass that torch on so that I can move on to bigger projects such as the educational institutions. And also, um, uh, the other day, one of the comrades uh, showed me Oakland's uh, resource library that um, I want to pass this on to Oakland and develop uh, the library there as well. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely, we. That's what we're going to be discussing uh, in the beginning of this year, the new year, uh, agitation and propaganda. We're going to consolidate um, a way to move forward to digitalize and archive those um, vi videos and speeches in order to have accessibility in all the libraries that we will produce, libraries. Uhuru, um, I first want to salute um, this office for the excellent work that you're doing. Um, and I think Betty Jo, you, Comrade Betty Jo, you've already answered part of the question that I was going to ask, which is, um, it, is it is essential that um, the party controls the narrative, especially when it comes to the chairman. And I wanted to ask, um, what is the uh, conversation that this office is having with the, de the Department of Agitation and Propaganda to really control that narrative and really push the party line and push the chairman as a brand? Um, what type of work are you doing with, uh, with the Department of Agitation and Propaganda to make sure that you put out the correct political line in the Uhuru. Uhuru. Uh, uh, So uh, thus far, uh, my work um, is, is obviously an extension of agitation and propaganda. And um, right now, I've, I'm still working on the P POA, and I have also um, been attacking the Bernie Spear Manual. So to uh, really um, make sure I know how to release 
propaganda um, on the terms of agitation and propaganda. Um, so thus far, that's, that has been my um, interaction with agitation and propaganda, but um, I am self-critical and I know I need to, I will have to deepen that relationship with agitation and propaganda moving forward. Um, um, that, yeah, that's, that, that's how I can answer that question right now. But that's a great question, Minta. Uhuru, I also want to say that um, Comrade uh, Betty Jo Soto mentioned the archives and the relationship between Agiprop and archives. We have 40, 50 years of stuff, photos, uh, cassette tapes, uh, VHS, uh, DVDs, 40 or 50 years, uh, stuff that's been written and stuck in boxes. I mean, uh, we talk about the political reports uh, that we have now. There are 40 or 50 years of stuff that's never really been published outside of our own and they're in files and, uh, and boxes and what have you. And <clears throat> this is a critical piece of work that has to happen also. I'm hoping that we've got some <clears throat> people, I think they call y'all nerds and stuff, uh, <laughs> but who really are attracted to just doing that kind of work, just pulling all of that stuff together because it needs to be organized and it needs to be accessible to the whole party and much of it to the world because some of it it's capturing events that's been happening over the last 40, 50 years in terms of struggles that we've been involved in, struggles going on in the world, et cetera. So that's a part of what it is that we have to pull together somehow. And also, uh, Comrade um, David uh, Lance, that's his name right now. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Lance is not a bad name. You know, because uh, one might also call a spear a lance, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, there's so much stuff he doesn't have access to. Even as this was, was as I was watching this, there's stuff, we've got videos, we've got uh, photos of the party in motion. Every time I look up, it's showing Panthers, which is fine. We've got Jomo, we've got the Huru movement, we've got going back for years and years and years, and, and you, we have to find a way to assess that. There's stuff that uh, Comrade Luese has uh, from, from ASI conferences that we've done in England, and uh, we have, a way, have to find a way to do this. And part of digitizing this stuff means that in the libraries, we're gonna have to develop an ability to have these little, these little portals or booths, if you will, where somebody can come and sit before a computer or sit before uh, a monitor and stick on some earphones and, you know, and get that history and need to have that, you know, uh, categorized in library form and, and, the, and, the, and the, the other audio stuff as well. And uh, so this is, this is the struggle that they have ahead of them. I mean, and it's deep. I'm talking about more than 40, 50 years almost of stuff that people are afraid to go into the <laughs> archive room. <laughs> You know, I mean, things seem to go in there and disappear. We never <laughs> see it anymore, you know. So uh, it's a, and, and one concern that we have is people die. When you pull out these photographs that's been going on for, that's been, we've been involved in 40, 50 years, somebody's got to be able to identify somebody who's on those photos. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's a real pressing piece of work. And I'm hoping that, you know, there are people out there who, who really like doing that kind of stuff, we can throw you in there and bring you a sandwich every now and then and lock the door, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, Uhuru, there is uh, one other uh, position that I wanted to make sure that um, I was not remiss in stating that we consolidated uh, in the office of the chair. Uh, it's taken some time, but it is one of the most critical uh, positions, in my opinion, and that is uh, personal security for Chairman O'Malley Chatella, uh, which is to say that um, he has it, and I think it's been one of the critical components uh, that the office required, that the party required, uh, to ensure the safety <laughs> and the 
the safety um, of our chairman, and I am just uh, pleased to say that we, we do have that in there. The chairman does not move on a company. So state if you're listening. Uhuru, <laughs> I'd just like to um, commend each and every one of you on the work that you're doing in the office of the chair chairman. Uh, this question is uh, for David, uh, for media relations. Um, for years, uh, I, I like to know how, how what, what will the credentials look like um, moving forward for your photographers and uh, reporters? Uh, uh, because, you know, when you, when you, maybe you might be in another state and you might be covering a story and sometimes you have to go into different offices and um, when we get it, when, you know, when the, um, the party photographers or the media, our media is um, in another city, you know, you have a, everybody had their credentials and you might have to get in the press box. Um, I just like to know how that would look because I had um, for years um, try to ask that question uh, when, when our photographers are out on assignments um, covering stories, um, we like to make sure that they know exactly who, you know, take us serious, take these, um, um, take our media uh, department serious by having credentials that reflect um, exactly uh, the, the burning spear um, or the, in the party. Uhuru. Mm -hmm. Uhuru. Um, that, that would just uh, be a matter of collaborating with the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. Um, and, and again, uh, <laughs> the, P, the POA uh, will lay out uh, specific directions on how to photograph the chairman, um, even down to lighting, um, set design, and things like that. So all of that will be defined. So if, that, if someone else uh, in my absence has to take on the role of photographer, that it, it should be um, it should be a doable thing. Uh, it won't be me. <laughs> but, you know, it will be developed as a science. Uh, so it, it will be laid out. Uhuru. Uhuru, y'all. Uh -huh. This question is for Alikia. Um, I'm wondering, when did you start playing music and what... <laughs> What is your process of um, writing music for the party specifically? Okay. Uh -huh. um, I started playing my first instrument when I was five years old. Um, writing for the party has been interesting and unlike anything else, any other songs I've written. Um, I can speak to the fight song and the anthem for the African nation specifically I mean, the process of writing music varies song to song as far as like whether the lyrics come first or the melody, you can be in the shower, you could be eating, you could be back there. I wrote a song yesterday back there and you know, but um, knowing that these songs have, you know, have to wreak African internationalism, I present a basic idea of melody and lyrics and I first bring it to the chairman who reviews it. Um, Oh, with the anthem, I asked him first, actually, what we presented the fight song, which was supposed to be the anthem as a surprise. And when he said it wasn't much of an anthem, it was more like a fight song, it became a conversation of, okay, what are you looking for in terms of an anthem? Um, and giving the, the guidelines of what the text will be, that, that's a song that I start lyrics first, and then based on the lyrics I'm coming up with, I try to hear a melody in the lyrics that are being written. Like he laid out the difference between what the party's anthem, which is gonna be taught on Friday is, um, what the national anthem would be and other things. So, you know, we give that draft to chairman um, and you know, yay, nay, take this out at this. Then the next step is, once I, once I hear, um, you know, have SG Louise look at it. I said, oh, this is gonna go from two verses to five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then, I take it to S.G. Luezi, and he reviews um, the lyrics, the lyrics of it all. And, you know, saying, add this, take out this, you know, just really giving it the, the structure. And then I take that, go back, 
arrange the, not that I know what the lyrics should be, arrange the melody around those lyrics, um, and then present a completed project. That's for those two songs specifically. Other songs, um, like Fighting for Freedom or the Freedom, uh, the Freedom Song, the Black Power Song, other songs that I have created that are not as heavy but are still, you know, correct politically, those are just, you know, using, you know, creativity and the, the skills I've learned from having, you know, played music so long. I, that, that's where the art of it comes in, those types of songs. But anthems, anything that's a lot heavier, um, that's where the, the, more the science comes first and the art is secondary. Um, whereas with the other songs, the art is first. And the science is there too, but I'm, I'm more focused on catchiness and can it stick with people. Like a lot of things I've heard um, during the first three days is that people telling me these songs stick and that's what I want. I want people to want to hear them. You know, you want, I don't know how many times I've heard a song on the radio that I don't even like the song. <laughs> I don't even like this song. But because it's so catchy, you find yourself singing the song and you know all the words. So we have to have a way to have songs that you want the people to learn, um, the message you want them to learn, but also it's catchy that they want to hear it. Uh -huh. Unless you're a white nationalist and you don't want to hear it at all. Uh -huh. I just want to uh, just make this uh, final contribution to this discussion in terms of branding. Me, anybody else, there's a typical kind of brand of somebody who is supposed to be a leader or, or significant. Uh, it's a bourgeois kind of brand, you know, that, you know, this typical silly pose uh, <laughs> that you expect to see every time. We want to we wanna brand the class. Yeah. We want people to be able to see the class, the African working class. We don't want to do cheap stuff and campy stuff. But, uh, you know, because I've known Africans who've come into the movement and they're going to, this is from the petty bourgeoisie, but they're going to, this is the working class, right? And so they put on overalls. This is literally true. And wear boots that are not fast and, you know, and slump <laughs> around. That ain't the African working class. Right. That's the petty bourgeoisie trying to look like the African, with this, with this prejudiced viewpoint of the African working class. I mean, you see the African working class every Sunday when you see these Negroes going to these churches and stuff. You don't see them like sloppy, bent, you know. I mean, our community is not like that, but we want to see the class. And uh, people, the African working class, should not be able to mistake us from those others. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> they need to see uh, that we, we want to, we want the swag needs to be there, you know, and <clears throat> it needs to be sharp. <clears throat> sharp and, you know, uh, and all of that, because that's the class. The class sets the terms in, 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 in terms of fashion and everything else. The working class does that. And uh, that's why uh, people are wearing this, this false poverty. You understand? Yeah. That's, why, uh, that's become, you know, people spend all this money buying yeah. Yeah. ripped clothes. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's an imitation, a false imitation of the class, because we even make raggedy stuff look good. You know what I mean? So, so the, the, we, we want to we wanna represent the class, and that should be clear. And stuff that embarrasses the, the petty bourgeoisie and stuff uh, that comes from the class, that's us. I won't sag, however. Oh. <laughs> Uhuru, just... One more thing that I wanted to add uh, before we close our presentation is that uh, there are several books that the chairman has written um, years ago that are no longer uh, in circulation. We only have one or two of them maybe in the whole entire office, but we want to take on um, moving forward uh, is the reprint of uh, Izwe Leitu e Africa. <laughs> as well as black power uh, since the 60s. Uhuru. 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 Thank you so much, the Office of the Chair. I hope I get the pronunciation right. Kupe tet. Kupe tet. Uhuru. <laughs> Cut off the heads and what? Burn the houses. <laughs> okay. We will take a break. All right. So next we're going to move into the report for agitation and propaganda. 
call those forces to it. It's always powerful to bring up Akile and Nae, the director of the Department of Education and Propaganda, and the editor in chief of the Burning Spear newspaper. No, are you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> She guides the party's cadre development work and the media apparatus, including its radio and social media operations. She was featured in Ebony Magazine during her 2017 bid for city council in St. Petersburg, Florida, where she ran on a platform of unity through reparations. Uh, Akile Anayi has been on the front lines fighting police violence and currently leads the campaign to make the south side of St. Petersburg black again. Fighting gentrification and forced relocation of the African community, I want to bring to the stage, once her people get out her way, <laughs> <laughs> Director Akile Anayi Uhuru. the fifth day of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party, and we just gotta give that a round of applause, I mean. <laughs> so as stated before, and I just wanna appreciate you today for that introduction, I am Akile Anai, I'm the Director of Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party. And I wanna say that I am extremely humbled and absolutely honored that I get to stand on this stage today as part of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party, my first ever Congress. Um, but um, I know you guys have seen, and despite some of that sketchy mic work, I promise, well, this is a good, solid team. And I just wanted to acknowledge those. Can I have all my agile prop forces who have worked on the Congress up until this point, who have worked the Congress, please just stand up. I wanna give everybody give these people a round of applause. This is an amazing team. This is an amazing team. I want to salute them because they have been working this Congress tirelessly. We had to miss Goku, y'all. Um, helping wherever we can, making sure this Congress is well executed and documented. I want to salute Comrade Temba Shibanda. Where you at? There you are. Uhuru. Um, I wanted to salute you. He has really been, throughout this Congress, just on the case, troubleshooting everything, providing on-site trainings. There are people who came in and had no clue about any of the equipment, and Timba is just you know, charging through it all, training these people on-site and solving problems as they have arised through this Congress. So I wanted to salute Comrade Timba. <laughs> So, 
before we get into the meat of this presentation, I obviously have to salute my leadership, uh, Chairman Amalia Shatella. There's been so much said about him already, I don't know what more I could ever say, but um, this man has carried the weight of the revolution on his shoulder for over 50 years. Through this process, Chairman has become an artist, a scientist in the struggle for African freedom through revolution, which has led to all the critical development within this party and the overall black liberation movement. A part of that development came the introduction of the concept dual and contending power by the chairman. This struggle for dual and contending power encompasses the struggle to forge a revolutionary apparatus of agitation and propaganda to win the war of ideas that we as African internationalists must win. Yeah. We must be victorious. Yeah. Based on this understanding alone, the Burning Spear newspaper was founded 50 years ago in 1968 and served as our black power movement's news journal since the crushing defeat of our revolution by the US government in the 60s. And our spear is the only newspaper, and I say that only, only newspaper that serves the class interests of African workers everywhere. And 50 years later, the Burning Spear newspaper is still being published. But agitation and propaganda has come much farther than the print of the newspaper and has much farther to go in terms of being what it needs to be for our people and our party. I am here to say, comrades, that we are on this trajectory. The African People's Socialist Party will have the most influential, transformative apparatus of agitation and propaganda in history. Yeah. I mean that. <laughs> Every day our work becomes a part of history as imperialism gasps its remaining breaths. Agiprop has to seize this moment where the masses of people are searching for our party and be out there everywhere, making the presence of the party overwhelming. There's no corner you can turn without seeing the African People's Socialist Party. This next period must become about building the political and ideological cohesion of our party and movement. And furthermore, getting these tools, these trainings, the spear and books onto the continent of Africa into the hands of our comrades there to take this apparatus to the international stage. Now, this report is really going to detail the work that has happened over the last two years or less, but the work of this department has been in an odd state for a while. Undergoing changes in management and struggling with the organizational structuring of this department has proved a real challenge until now. I was co-opted into, into the position of Director of Agitation and Propaganda in November of 2017. And let me just say, the chairman is always surprising me. Just earlier that year, chairman had pulled us into a meeting in St. Petersburg telling Jesse and I to get ready because we were going to run for office. <laughs> then one sunny Saturday morning, I got a call from the chairman asking if I united with the role of the director. And I actually bawled my eyes out. Um, I was overwhelmed with the appreciation, overwhelmed with appreciation of the party for entrusting this role with me. And um, just wanted to be extremely confident in carrying out this role because the party had instilled within me a great responsibility and for a reason. Uh, prior to this though, Timba Shabanda contributed so much to this department as the previous director. Relocating from Chicago to St. Pete to answer the call of being the director, building the radio station, turning over all of these technical skills that without him, honestly, I wouldn't have been able to figure out. Despite the state of this department, when I entered into this position, I don't want to understate the contributions this comrade made to this department. And to this day, his contributions as seen at this Congress have been extremely significant. Since coming into this department, we initiated a graphics design training program internal to my office so that comrades would be trained in the skill of graphic design that would make us more efficient in the production of propaganda, being an army of propagandists. Yes. It is an eight to 10 week class that shortly after this Congress will, meet, will be made available to our party and movement. It was organized by comrade Kyle Wies from the African People's Solidarity Committee. This program was developed not only to make us competent in graphic design, it was to initiate a process of white people turning over their skills that they acquired as a result of the assault on Africa and the theft of our resources and skills. The goal is to have 
The Solidarity Force is completely removed from the Department of Agitation and Propaganda so that we can be self-determining. For us to take back our skills, they belong to us, our resources, and free up APSC to go do what they have, to, have been assigned to do in the reparations work. So far, this has been achieved in the production of the Burning Spear. The Burning Spear has a complete African staff, with the exception of the indigenous comrade, Comrade Kota. So the first thing we did in this department was establish what the actual membership of this department was, because there are a bunch of names and there are a bunch of titles, but are people really doing anything? I was calling, emailing, and going through lists of names, and from that came out with a solid list of comrades. We have, as mentioned, Tembe Shibanda, Mensa on Ajanaku from Las Vegas. We have Taylor Mock, who's the secretary for the Burnings for Distribution team, who could not be here with us today because of an accident that happened over the weekend, the start of this Congress. However, she is okay, and she is an absolutely incredible secretary for the Burnings for Distribution team. We have Kabula Mutambo, please, come on up, Kabula. He is the Midwest Regional Spear Agent. He's been with the party for a minute now and is mean in the streets with the Burning Spear in Chicago. All right, Uhuru. <laughs> Next we have Robert Quinones, underwriting manager for Black Pride 96.3 FM, proofreader for the Burning Spear. And he is an incredible, studious, and enthusiastic comrade from Orlando, Florida. Then we have my girl, Naya Akril, chief copy editor for the Burning Spear newspaper, as well as the DAP representative for the Southern region. And let me tell y'all, hold up. Y'all see how bad she is out there on the honor guards, right? Y'all see how bad she is? Right. So let me tell y'all, so she from ATL, um, and she don't play. Um, and when I first came in contact with Naya, she had been volunteering on the Burning Spear production team for eight months. And, you know, I just heard this sister's commitment and the seriousness she displayed for this newspaper. She's just a volunteer. I said, Naya, you, you want to join the party? She was like, yeah, we to join the party. <laughs> so we went through the application process, and Naya has just been a tremendous force, really stepping up during this Congress building process, taking on any role given to her, and figuring out what it takes to do it. Yeah. That's what it takes. She gets out in those streets. She sells that burning spear. And she gets them carried at local bookstores. And she is adamant on getting the party in her city. So, Uhuru Naya. We have my comrade, Diakiese Lungisani, who moved from South Carolina, Hillhead, Hillhead, to Florida <laughs> to work in the Adjuprop office. And in that process, was asked to manage Black Pride 96.3 FM. And I just want to say that I can't think of anyone better to run that damn radio station. I, no, I, I can't think of somebody. Dia is truly incredible and more than just a station manager for the radio station. This comrade is up late with me at the Uhuru house, packing and shipping out spears, organizing that office, doing whatever work he can to assist the work and development in St. Petersburg, Florida. And lastly, we have comrade Olofin Ikemba. has been a member since October of 2017 and one of the comrades I came across in search of what was real in the department and it wasn't long before I knew Olofin is real. Yeah. This comrade based in Hawaii in a whole different time zone has been on every meeting completing every assignment turning in every report I call Olofin for doing work he ain't got no business doing I'm like Olofin I just need you to do this. And he currently functions as the managing editor for the Burning Spear newspaper. And if you have a column in the newspaper currently, you have experienced Comrade Olofin. You have experienced him and how seriously he takes his work. Um, I also want to acknowledge the Agiprop APSC comrades. We have Sandy Thompson in the back. We have Lisa Watson and Kyle Beast. And he's not here today, but we saw him earlier at the Congress. I want to recognize Comrade Omawale K. Feng. Uhuru K. Feng! 
He's a veteran of the African People's Socialist Party and the Burning Spear newspaper, serving currently as the political editor for the Spear. Y'all know, if y'all call him writer, hmm, y'all know KV. And, as a, and he is a wealth of knowledge and he is an advisor of this department. K. Fing comes with so much history, and he won't forget to remind us of the significance of our party and the work that the chairman has done. So I just wanted to salute Comrade K. Fing. So it's with this that I am confident. See all these people up here? All the people I talked about? I'm confident about the future and the here and now of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. By this point, um, everyone should have received these little blue folders right here. Um, we are going to be referencing these documents that are in them throughout our presentations today. And, um, but you can take a look at them through, um, throughout the presentations. But I'm going to go ahead and get out the way now. I've been talking for a, lot, uh, for a while. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the first part of our presentation, which is the Burning Spear newspaper production team with comrades Naya and Olafin. Uhuru. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> 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 Uhuru, uh, comrades, so my name is Alofa Nakimba, as Director Akile mentioned earlier. I'm the managing editor of the Burning Spear newspaper, Yay! and um, um, as throughout the duration of the Congress, we've been hearing about the distribution of the spear, the outreach um, aspect of the party work, but we don't really hear a lot about the production aspect of the Burning Spear newspaper, and that's what um, this production report will highlight. Um, and this is uh, Comrade Naya Akril. And um, we're going to start with the burning uh, interview, a telephone interview with myself and Comrade Amali K. Fing, um, highlighting the importance of the Burning Spear newspaper. So, I'm joined by Comrade Amwali K. Fing, longtime party member of the African People's Socialist Party since 1974, and a Burning Spear staff member since 1977. Comrade K. Fing was an editor in chief from 1982 to 1988, and again from 2012 to 2015. And he currently serves as the chief political editor of the Burning Spear newspaper. Uru K. Fing. Uru Comrade, thank you for having me on. It is an absolute honor to be interviewing you today. So without further ado, we're going to get started with the questions. Okay, so how did you first meet the party? Had you been, in, had you been involved in any kind of organizing prior to this, and why did you choose to join the African People's Socialist Party? Well, I, I first met the party through the Burning Spear newspaper. I was at an African Liberation Day demonstration in Washington, D.C. This had to be 1974. And uh, someone from the party was there. That didn't even see a newspaper. I bought one. Uh, when we got back to Atlanta, that's where I was living at the time, we did a couple of studies around uh, on the party's land. And, uh, and I, I pretty much uh, uh, liked what I was uh, reading there, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, that was my first uh, uh, encounter uh, uh, with African People's Socialist Party was through uh, uh, the Burning Spear uh, newspaper. And it kind of uh, uh, has stuck with me since that time the importance of, uh, uh, of having that party down in the streets uh, uh, with the people. And again, you know, the Burning Spear, uh, uh, it, 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 it served as so, so many other things. Let me tell you, we, uh, uh, it, 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 like in promotion of the struggle to free Desi Wood, you know, 
Couldn't nothing else serve the better purpose uh, uh, than the Burnsville newspaper. Uh, and I worked in Atlanta for some years. Love to see the chairman come through. Uh, to Atlanta, you know, so we could do some program with, just talk to them and stuff. But one thing, if you would give us a choice between who we wanted to come, the chairman of our brothers being a newspaper, I think we would choose the spear every time. Because that really gave us a chance to get out in that community and organize and talk to the people. So that's to show you how hell, you know, how high. The British newspaper was held uh, uh, in esteem by the cadre uh, uh, on the ground. Uh, everybody talked about the British field. Everybody wanted to be a part uh, uh, of the British field newspaper. In the summer of 1984, what we did, uh, 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 we did an Oakland summer project, which was actually. 20 years following the Mississippi Summer Project that was done by the Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee down in, uh, uh, in Mississippi that would produce the Black Power slogan two years later. Anyway, uh, um, we, we, we were doing this Oakland Summer Project in the Land Reform Law and uh, at the time, Jesse Jackson was fighting uh, for the nomination of the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, the slogan was, run, Jesse, run. So uh, 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 the front page of the Vernonville newspaper, what it, what it had, it had a, a photo uh, of Jesse Jackson, I think it was Andrew Davis, uh, 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 Falcon, uh, and, and a host of, host of other leftists with the caption reading, the line form to the left, the least of survey, but the caption reading, no confidence in the United States government, male or female, uh, uh, Black or white, Democrat or Republican. Um, so, do you have any words of advice for spear writers or spear sellers today? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, like the uh, the four hours that you spend on on Facebook, take your bone or burn spear newspaper, get on the corner, and I guarantee you. Or come out of that with a real friend as opposed to a cyber friend who people say anything they want to online. You know, you got a, a million experts and nobody expert about nothing, you know? Uh, uh, so I'm suggesting that uh, 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 that still sellers, you know, take this mission seriously and get your bundle. Go out there and see how much more uh, 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 lively and, 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 you know, uh, uplifting that is as opposed to being on some, you know, a, a social media page for four or five hours. Uh, in regard to uh, 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 the spill writers, you know, we've got so many uh, 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 people with these cameras, you know, uh, 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 shooting all these murders and all these beatings. I suggest that 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 uh, uh, uh you know that uh, I know we've got a writing team in the spirit, but we also have copy out there that things are happening in their neighborhoods that they should write about. If they write about it and get it to us, we can do the copy editing proofread. And, and political editor and make sure that that story gets out. Tell us a picture of, of that person in your neighborhood that you want to be in, in, in that newspaper. We put that picture in the newspaper. You got the hood. You sell the burden to the newspaper. You write about their problem. They read about their problem. So uh, I just really believe 
we've got we've got uh, 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 the best tool in the arsenal of the party is the Bernie Sears newspaper, and that's a fact. So as stated before, I'm Naya Akril, and I'm honored to stand before you today to give you the first half of the production report for The Burning Spear. Um, just a quick salute to the leadership of the party and my direct leadership at uh, Ana uh, Akile Anai. And it has been an absolute honor to work alongside these comrades to put this together every month. So, so um, most if not all uh, of us know about The Burning Spear but some of us may not be aware of all the history packed into this revolutionary publication. The Spear was founded in 1968 by our very own chairman, Amali Yeshitela. It is the longest running revolutionary newspaper in existence, and it serves as the official news organ of the African People's Socialist Party. The newspaper is written from the point of view of the African working class and serves as the most important weapon in the arsenal of every African internationalist. The African People's Socialist Party organizational manual for, in section 5.13 describes the spear as the most important instrument of the, agitation, of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda, and it is how we reach the African working class by the masses. So on the left, you're going to see the very first spear printed in December 1969, and you're going to see a more uh, recent uh, spear printed in August of 2018, so you can see the difference and how long, it, uh, how far it's come since its initiation in 1969. Uh, and on the left, you're going to see the uh, in a more dated spear, February, March, April, 1989. That's what the rules of the uh, party discipline looked like in 1989 compared to what it looks like now. This is August uh, 2018. So now we're going to meet our production team. We have um, finish, let it finish loading up. So we have our editor in chief, uh, Kile Anai, director Kile Anai. We have the managing editor, uh, Lofan Akimba. We have our political editor, uh, and veteran to the spear and to the party, Amawali Kefing. We have uh, yours truly as your copy editor, Naya Akata Akril. And uh, we have uh, proofreaders, uh, um, Robert Quinones. We also have layout designers uh, that help with the layout and the pr uh, presentation of the spear. Um, and that's done by uh, Chia Kotasuka, Kota also known as Kota, and uh, Alofin and Kimba. And we have several writers from within the party and our allies throughout the world, and they're, um, they're all over the, I mean, literally all over the world and within the U.S., several locations, um, occupied Azania, Kenya, we write from all over. And although our photographers are not, a, uh, are not actual members of the production team, we need them to bring uh, photos that can capture what's going on when we're telling our stories wherever we are. So they are very important. Um, we can't imagine the spear without photos and capturing what's going on. So we've got uh, Nana Yaw, David Lance, and Dexter M. Luingo. So to make the spear a success each month, it has to undergo several layers of production. And those include uh, political editing, and that's handled by Comrade Omawali Kefin. Copy editing, which is uh, done by myself and Robert Quinones. Proofreading, which, are um, which is done through Comrades Olofin and Robert. Layout, which is done by uh, Comrades Kota, Olofin, and Robert. And putting the spear to bed, which is basically going through the spear after it's been laid out, 
to catch, um, catch any mistakes or anything that's not um, making it on point. Um, and that's done by all production team members. So political editing is a very important process uh, because it ensures the political accuracy, factualness, and soundness of the articles that are submitted each month. The political editor has to have a very thorough understanding of the theory of African internationalism and um, that the newspaper must bring forward the strategies of the party and speak directly in the interest of African people. Copy editing is done by myself and Robert. And um, it's very important because um, it, it ensures that the spear is free of grammatical errors, typos, and incorrect sentence structuring that if missed can make the newspaper appear unprofessional. Um, copy editors also ensure that headlines and subheads throughout the piece are appropriate and paragraphing is facilitated well. Uh, copy editors must also have a thorough understanding of the theory of African internationalism and raise concerns during the copy editing process if the article is not congruent with the theory. And then um, proofreading. Proofreaders also have a very important task of catching anything that we may have missed during the copy editing process. Um, we also, they also raise contradictions that if were previously missed, uh, they also have uh, you know, they braze those at that point, and um, they also have to have a very thorough and deep understanding of that theory of African internationalism. So as you can see, each one of these um, layers uh, really, you know, each member that's conducting that task have to have a very thorough understanding of African internationalism in order for the paper to reflect that. Because we don't want to appear to be any type of bourgeoisie media source, we're not, we're that. We are uh, the African working class in the vanguard, and we want to reflect that in our paper. So now I'm going to turn it over to my comrade, uh, Alofin. Uhuru, thank you, Naya. OK, so this is still going through the slides. So Burning Spear layout, the layout team is responsible for pulling this spear together and making it what it is before being handed to you. Um, the layout team follows the political goal for the spear uh, put forth by the editor-in-chief. And um, we or it organizes the content of the paper to make it more visually pleasing. So as Naya mentioned, putting the spear to bed is a process where we all come together, all three of us come together and um, just correct the typos, the page numbers, the volume, make sure the volume is correct, um, headlines, kickers, so on and so forth. So the columns in the Burning Spear newspaper, uh, we have Harriet's Daughters, Kinshasa International, Point of the Spear, Office of the Deputy Chair, White Solidarity with Black Power, and Diasporic Music. And a fun fact is you can find this list on page two of every printed issue of the Spear. So Harriet's Daughters is written by Comrade President Yejide Oramila of Anwo. Um, it is written from um, the perspective of African internationalism and addresses the special, special colonial conditions African women face. And uh, the column title was taken from Harriet Tubman, which was an African martyr. And that's a page of Harriet's Daughters uh, reading, the Party Seven Congress is almost here and African women are leading us there. Uh -huh. So next we have Kinshasa International is written by um, Secretary General Louise Kinshasa. And it reports on the issues of the international African community, which is namely on the continent of Africa. It has writers from occupied Azania, which is South Africa and Kenya. And this is a page of the August issue, um, 
as well as the Harriet's Daughters, was, which was from the August issue of the Brandon Spear newspaper. The African People's Socialist Party is, the develop, is developing the true vision of Garvey's UNIA. <laughs> and we have the point of the spear, written by our very own Chairman Amala Yeshatela. Um, that was a, okay. So um, it focuses on the critique surrounding pressing, pressing issues in the African community and the world. And this year we published the, I believe the entire political report in the pages, not the entire, okay. So some of the political report to the seventh Congress um, in this column. Okay, next we have um, Office of the Deputy Chair, run by Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshatela. Um, uh, it reports on the economic development of the party and it showcases dual and contending power in the party. And all photos in this column are in color. So that is the Office of Deputy Chair. Now we have White Solidarity with Black Power, written by Chairwoman Penny Hiss and of the African People's Solidarity Committee. And it publicizes the reparations demand on every article. And it calls on white people to commit national suicide and join the revolution through material solidarity. And this is a column um, from uh, White Solidarity with Black Power. So lastly, we have Diasporic Music by Norman O. Richmond, AKA Jalali, which many of, them, many of us know him as. It writes about African music icons and their significance to revolutionary struggle and reveals the importance of African music and culture. And this um, is one of his columns in the Burning Spirit newspaper. I think it was from August as well. Okay, so where would a Burning Spear newspaper be in five years? So the Spear seeks to train African writers from all around the world to report um, on incidents happening internationally um, in their regions, in their communities, um, and possibly build columns like, um, shoot, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, yeah, we seek to train African writers all around the world. And I know um, what we heard in PDM speak, they, they're looking to create a column. So we're looking to expand our columns as well. Um, the Burning Spear is going to start accepting artwork and comic submissions for Africans who want their talents to be recognized. Um, the Spear, we plan to build our production capacity to produce printed articles frequently um, bringing you weekly or daily African internationalist news stories. So not just a month, but like frequently um, contending with um, bourgeois media and white power media. Um, so the Burning Spear will be accepting advertisements from African businesses who recognize the importance of buying black power. And as I said, um, the BurningSpear.com would be bringing you, bring you articles to your news feed weekly. But with all the work that goes into doing this, um, and we have such a relatively small team, um, as like Chairman mentioned in the political report, Director Akile came in and she recognized like who was important and um, we're dealing with um, very few people, so we need different sectors of the Burning Spear field, which is political editors, writers, copy editors, proofreaders, layout designers, and photo editors. So I just want to personally thank 
each and every one of you for keeping the Burning Spear newspaper burning for 50 years. 50 years. And uh, as it says next, we have the Burning Spear distribution report. Uhuru. Oh, it's my brother, Chairman. Yeah, he wrote, he drew the picture and designed it, like, immediate. Yes. Hmm. All right, Uhuru, one more round of applause for the Burning Spear production team. There you go. Thank you. I could do double the mic, but you know. Why? All right, so uh, the um, second aspect of the Burning Spear newspaper um, and what has been uh, most discussed is the distribution of the Burning Spear newspaper. So the Burning Spear distributing in a city near you. Um, this report was put together by myself, uh, Comrade Taylor Mock, the distribution secretary, and Midwest Regional Spear agent, Kabula Matumbo. Oh, do I have the clicker? Yeah. Oh. Where? Where? Thank you. All right. All right. <clears throat> So our mission is to make the Burning Spear the primary and most widely distributed source of news among African people worldwide. This means we must build a culture of selling the Burning Spear in our party and throughout our movement. The importance of selling the spear. The Burning Spear newspaper, as it's been laid out many, many times before throughout this Congress and even in the production report, is the, internationalist vo the international voice of the African Revolution. The spear spreads the theory of African internationalism and connects our party to the people and our people to the party. And it's the only newspaper that exists like this today. It's the only black power newspaper in the world today. All revolutions need revolutionary press. It is a war of ideas, and our newspaper is the perfect arm to fight back. Our newspaper gives us the ability to report on what's happening in the world and in our colonized communities. Gives African people a voice, gets to talk about, to say, this is what the slum lords are doing, this is what this person is doing to me, this is what gentrification has done to me. It gives African people, the African working class, a voice. And it, it, it's you know put through the eyes of the African working class, because we know, Chairman has said it, that, you know, the media serves a class interest. It serves a class interest, and the Burning Spear serves a class interest of the African workers. It gives us the ability to control the narrative and define us to the world versus being defined by white power. We get to define ourselves instead of being defined by white power. It is a paper openly biased to the interests of the African poor and working class. We make no qualms about that. It's openly biased. There is no such thing as bi I mean, um, you know, non-biased media. It's always biased. Again, every media institution serves the cl a class interest. So you, there's no non-bias in media. And most importantly, it is ours, owned and controlled by us. No one can tell us what to do but us furthering the objective for our people to be self-determining. So currently, this is where we are shipping, and this is based on party membership and where people are located uh, um, selling the Burning Spear newspaper, but also other forces who are not within our party but are associated with the Uhuru movement selling the Burning Spear newspaper. And obviously, we need to fill this up more, 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 and we also need to see more areas of the world on this map. So. Do you want to know how to become a distributor for the Burning Spear newspaper? Come on. <laughs> you trying to get right for the revolution? <laughs> well, it's very simple. Well, start by visiting BurningSpearMarketplace.com, or you can see me or Olofin. We got your October Spears here. Um, but you can visit BurningSpearMarketplace.com to get started. You set up your reoccurring payments to have the amount deducted automatically, so you wouldn't have to notice it. It just goes whoop, and then you get your Spears to your front door. And it's only 15 for 25 Spears and $60 for 100. And let me tell y'all, just like Kay Fink said, you spend a good hour or two on a corner, you know, you'll make a friend, and you'll sell all those Spears. Those Spears will go out of your hand. They'll fly. And if you, um, you can get the distributor rate and make money while selling the Burning Spear newspaper. So when I say, when you get your spears, you say hit the streets, all right? 
When you get your spears, get the when you get your spears, get the when you get your spears, get the and this could be you, but you'll be playing. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to have uh, Naya, if y'all could bring those gift bags up for me right quick. Because um, we do want to build a culture of selling the spear within the African People's Socialist Party. We have to reintroduce that. Um, we know that, you know, Revol I mean, we saw the Black Panther uh, Party newspaper, but even our own party being out in the streets and selling out of the Burning Spear newspaper, that is a part of our history. And, you know, there's this whole thing about, um, you know, the world moving in this digital direction, all this kind of stuff, and the paper becomes obsolete, but that's not true. That's not true, not in the African working class communities, not when all the, the resources and the wealth and the technolo technology is hoarded within the white community. Our people need that newspaper. Our people need that newspaper, need to see themselves reflected in it, need to see their faces, their stories in that newspaper. And it is a responsibility of every party member to sell the burning spear. It is a responsibility of every party member to sell the Burning Spear newspaper. If you're not selling the Burning Spear newspaper, what are you doing? It is a part of the daily work of every member of the African People's Socialist Party. If you can't do anything else, you can take that spear to your college campus, to your jobs, to the party, parties, families, events, all those kinds of things. You can take the spear there and you can sell that newspaper and that newspaper will sell. You have to read the Burning Spear newspaper. You have to read it, you have to know it like the back of your hands so you can be able to communicate with the masses what's in this newspaper and you have that and you'll be able to sell it. You'll be able to sell the newspaper. It's your responsibility. It's on all of us to make this newspaper necessary. Make the newspaper necessary, because it is. It connects our communities together. So there are comrades in this movement that I do want to acknowledge for selling the Burning Spear newspaper. And not, you know, I'm not talking about five or 10. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody that's uh, buying their spears and putting them in the closets under the bed and stuff like that and let them get dusty. I'm talking about people who are actually out there buying hundreds of spears every month and getting out in those streets and talking to people. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we are talking about. The party is talking about waging the war of ideas. And that means we have to be out in the uh, streets. And there are comrades in this party who do that, who sell hundreds of spears every month, do that consistently, and we wanted to recognize them. So we have some distributor awards. We're gonna start doing that. We're gonna start recognizing the members who are selling these spirits within our party. So we have the first award, which is the Burning Spear Bronze Distributor Award. And when I call your name, you can come up. We're gonna go ahead and give you one of these bags. Let me just make sure which one is the right one real quick. Hold on. This is this one. So the Burning Spear Bronze Distributor Award goes to Comrade Kobina Bantushango in Huntsville, Alabama. Where's Kobina? He upstairs? Uhuru! This is yours. Be like Kobina! Uhuru! All right, so now we have the Burning Spear Silver Distributor Award. Goes to Carmack Kabula Mutombo in Chicago. <laughs> Y'all know who won the gold, right? Do I gotta say it? Do I gotta say it? I might as well. Timbo! <laughs> this brother sell them spears. He sell those spears. It's not a part of the PowerPoint, but we're going to have a tool. So all of y'all out there who need to know how to sell the Burning Spear newspaper, get ready, because we're coming to a city near you, and we're going to tell you how to sell the Burning Spear newspaper. <laughs> all right, and now all work has contradictions, right? Can't even skate over it. Can't skate, you can try, but you can't. It's right there in your face. So distributions, contradictions. Well, first and foremost, the Burning Spear Distribution Office has been without a consistent manager. And that is like the primary thing needs to be overturned. Right now, that seat is 
vacant, but not vacant because we take it on. You know, we, we do what we got to do to get that spear out to you. Um, but the, uh, this office um, is, we have to develop this office, it has to build, it has to have people in there. Um, the burning spear must be economically self-sufficient. It must pay for itself, and it can. It can, it can pay for itself. Everybody in the party and our movement is selling the Burning Spear newspaper. That alone, it sells itself. We must recruit in the Spear's office distribution, as I mentioned. And we've taken on the task of getting the Spear in the hands of the masses by any means necessary, by any means necessary. So any contradictions or anything like that have to be quickly overturned because we have, we have to solve these problems. Because as we just laid out the importance and significance of the Burning, significance of the burning Spear newspaper, this is something that we have to overcome. Distribution's way forward, as I said, we need a distribution manager. And the qualities, I really want to go into this. I really want to go into this because, you know, it says you must eat, sleep, and breathe the Burning Spirit newspaper, and I'm not even being facetious. I'm not. You have to love the Burning Spirit newspaper. You have to love it. I mean, you, you, you can love journalism, you can love newspaper, and that's, and that's good, but you have to love the Burning Spear newspaper for what it is and what it represents for our party and our movement and carrying out the revolution. You have to... You have to see that newspaper, and if it's sitting in your office and it's not getting sold, you have to be, you have to be upset. You have to be outraged. You have to be figuring out how to get the spear out into the world. That is, that's what it requires from a distribution manager, because that informs all the people under their team. It puts the fire under everybody's asses to make sure that spear gets out in the world. That's what it takes. It's not easy. There's tedious work. There's all this clerical stuff. There's all this type of office stuff involved, and you have to overcome it. You have to overcome it. It has to be organized, has to be built, but it can be. You recruit into the office, recruit into it locally. Go to these college campuses, go to these high school uh, campuses. They got journalism programs, get people volunteers. You know, bring them in to handle all the other tedious work so that you can lead the office effectively. But that's what it takes. It requires that. It requires that commitment. And there's so much in this, in this work. And I don't want to, you know, bullshit anybody. It's a very serious position. It has to be taken with the utmost seriousness. And it has to be approached with a level of enthusiasm, a high level of enthusiasm. Like I said, you got to love this newspaper. What's not to love about the Burning Spear newspaper and what it represents for our party and our movement? And when you approach it with that, when you approach it with this love and deep appreciation for the Burning Spear newspaper, you can solve all these problems, and we will. For real. So what to expect in 2019? And before you look at me crazy, Chairman. All right. I, I, I said the, we, you know, the importance of the print edition of the Burning Spear newspaper is extremely important. Printing it out, getting it into the hands of the masses, the print copies of the Burning Spear. But we will be moving into digital subscriptions. For, for your Android devices, iPhones, iPods, iPads, and laptops, subscriptions, subscriptions. Um, you know, you see, you, you, you see all the little bourgeois uh, fashion magazines, you get your online subscriptions, you pay $25 a month to see white people uh, stealing African culture. Um, well, you can, you know, pay $25 um, a year for Burning Spear, um, Burning Spear copies every month to any of your digital devices. And this primarily came as a result of making the Burning Spear accessible because we've ran into the issue of people ordering, people want the burning spear. So they order from out of the country and we are met with the limitations of our capacity to ship out into the world. And we don't, we want to overturn that. We want to overcome how to ship out into the world, but we don't want to deny people access to the burning spear newspaper. And people also have the ability to support it through this process. So uh, we're going to move into digital subs uh, subscriptions. And, oop, oop, no, 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 go back. And. Um, also mentioned was, uh, oh wait, no, go back. Shipping costs, surprise! <laughs> so the Burning Spear newspaper is going to require shipping costs to be covered by all distributors, orders of the Spear. And um, you know, all of our shoppers come 2019 will have to pay for shipping um, costs for anything that you order from Burning Spear Marketplace. Um, we have to support the production and distribution of the Spear, which comes with great costs. Comrades paying for shipping costs will ensure that the Spear can be printed and shipped out on time. No limitations. This aids the work of the Burning Spear newspaper. That's how we have to look at it. 
And as mentioned in the production report, we're going to be talking about purchasing ad space, approaching, approaching businesses, um, you know, black-owned businesses, friendly businesses that, uh, you know, appreciate, well, one, appreciate the Burning Spring newspaper, appreciate, um, you know, buying black power. And, um, you know, we want to, you know, have a whole campaign of getting people in your city to purchase ads within the Burning Spear newspaper. Um, and again, this will bring resources into the distribution of the Burning Spear. And now I'm going to call, call up comrade Kabula Mutumbo, who is going to deliver the report on the Sponsored Prisoner Program, which is another program that comes out of this office. Uhuru. The Sponsor Prisoner Program is where we have to get the burning spear in every space that the African community is. And prison is definitely where we have uh, over half a million, uh, almost half a million Africans are currently locked up, uh, whether they're political prisoners or, or just uh, people framed up. Uh, that's, that's the ground that we have to cover. We must take seriously winning the war of ideas in every available space within our oppressed colony. Um, we're shipping up prisoners in all these locations. Um, we have a, it's a massive amount. And um, we get letters from all these locations. And uh, we've decided to renamed this, this sponsorship program to the Mufundi Lake Sponsorship Program. Um, inside the Burning Spear, Comrade Omawali K. Fing wrote an article where it says, uh, on Sunday, January 21st, 2018, I was informed by Mala Lake, that her father, Richard Mufundi Lake, had passed away that morning. The guards had found him unresponsive in his Alabama prison cell of 31 years. As of this writing, an official cause of death had not been determined, but Mufundi Lake Support Committee in Birmingham, Alabama, had been fighting in the prison system for years demanding adequate medical attention from a fundy and other inmates in Alabama. Carolyn Winnie Najiri Lake, Mufundi's wife and chair of the committee, wrote in one complaint published by the support committee in response to the third stroke Mufundi had suffered. She stated, my husband was admitted to the infirmary at Donaldson Correctional Facility where he is a prisoner Unfortunately, there is no doctor at this facility on weekends. As a matter of fact, two prisoners recently died in Donaldson during a weekend where no doctors were present. Not only that, Mufundi had been without his regular medication for four weeks prior to this incident. So despite what an official determination might say, the fact is that Mufundi's death is squarely on the state of Alabama and the entire colonial U.S. state that framed and put him there in the first place. At the time of Mufundi's death, he was serving a life sentence under the three, the three strikes you're out law. Mufundi was arrested on trumped up rape charges eight, di eight days following a successful National African Liberation Day March rally and conference in May of 1983 in Birmingham, in which Mufundi was the primary organizer. The African Liberation Day activities were not the usual Birmingham civil rights mobilization. It was a revolutionary activity that and was contested by the state from the FBI down to the local police. From the denial of parade permits to acquiring venue space, the government opposed this action from start to finish, and Mufundi paid the price. 
Um, born in 1940, Mufundi grew up in Birmingham, Alabama in the 50s in what was a political hotbed of black protests. The Montgomery bus boycott and the st string stirring of the movement of, for black power and self-defense. Mufundi, like so many young Africans at the time, was swept off the streets by the Birmingham police and sheriffs Bull Connor's deputies to do slave labor in the many agricultural prison camps throughout the state. As a teenager, he was framed for a $34 robbery and sentenced to 14 years hard labor. The police had taken a potential organizer, revolutionary from the streets and put him in prison. It was at the Atmore Home and Prison Facility where Mufundi came into full bloom as an organizer and black revolutionary. Well aware of the oppression in the outside African community, the horrors of life inside the prison walls are a gruesome reality. No medical care, guards murdering and torturing inmates, gutter food, and absolutely no rights to speak of in the fields of the prison plantations. In response to these conditions, Mufundi organized Inmates for Action, one of the first and most effective prison organizations to come out of the Black Revolution of the 60s. In retaliation for his organizing efforts, Mufundi was to spend 12 consecutive years in solitary confinement. Despite this, however, the state was not able to break his will. To paraphrase Mufundi's testimony in Brooklyn, New York, before the African People's Socialist Party organized the first World Tribunal on Reparations for Black People in the United States in 1982, he says, for 12 years in isolation, I had no books to read. I learned to play chess without a board. It would get extremely cold with no heat or blankets in the cells. I slept on concrete slabs. And, it made, and to make matters worse, the guards would throw water on the floor to make it colder. I would shadow box until I would get exhausted near the point of passing out in order to sleep. I would take the little piece of toilet tissue that they gave us, which was three tiny squares, and put on my chest and psych myself out that it was a blanket. This is the Mufundi I knew. Upon his release from prison, Mufundi helped to organize the first prisoner support organizations in Alabama. The Committee for Prisoner Support in Birmingham, Families for Action, African People's Survival Committee, and the Atmore Holman Brothers Defense Committee. I first met Mufundi in the mid-1970s while doing work out of Atlanta, Georgia, when the African People's Socialist Party built the National Committee to Defend Desi Woods. Desi Woods was an African woman sentenced to prison for killing a white man who tried to rape her. I was in and out of Birmingham on a regular basis doing organizing work with Mufundi and the Prisoner Support Committee there. While there, I lived with Mufundi and his wife, Njeri, who is one of the most decent human beings I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. In the summer of 78, following the march on Plains, Georgia, to free Desi Woods, the APSP began the organized effort to build the African National Prison Organization. Mufundi was named national coordinator of the organization, which he took on with the zealousness of the freedom fighter he was. One of my most memorable moments with Mufundi was down in Gainesville, Florida in November of 79. We were there attending a meeting to organize the prison organization. While in Gainesville, the people of Iran seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, accusing it of being a nest of spies. Of course, supporters of the Iranian Revolution, we supported the bold move by the Iranian revolutionaries and called for and held a march and demonstration in unity with the Iranians. Our march and demonstration called for the freedom of the 40 million black hostages held in the U.S. The demonstration was physically attacked by thousands of U.S. flag-waving white people shouting USA, USA, and sand niggas go home. We had to fight our way back to the hood as Mufundi used a confiscated skateboard as a weapon of convenience. 
<laughs> he made it back. The demonstration made international news, especially the Iranian press. We completed this demonstration the following week when Chairman O'Malley Yesha Taylor came to Gainesville and led the marchers untouched through these same thousands of foaming at the mouth white nationalists with the chant, Africa, Africa, Africa. Um, by the end of 1979, Mufundi and I were consistently on the road building the African National Prison Organization. Mufundi was passionate about the terrible treatment of African prisoners throughout the U.S. and was adamant about dismantling the whole system. We would fill the car up with literature and from Florida to Connecticut, we traveled based on the contact list we were working with, occasionally stopping off at places like uh, Trenton State Prison in New Jersey where Sundiata Okoli was, on, was locked down. These were truly life lessons, trapped in a car 12 to 15 hours at a time with my comrade and friend of Fundy Lake plotting revolution and how to get free. The work we did in Birmingham and other places did not win Mufundi's freedom, but was successful nonetheless. Having the occasion to work with Nigeri and watch our daughter Asada grow up reinforced every day the commitment ordinary Africans have to that revolutionary project. Some of Mufundi's last work included challenging the prison system for dismantling a black history program he had established at the unit in Bessemer, uh, Alabama. At 77, he was still standing tall for Africa and African people. Here is an excerpt from a letter Mufundi sent to me following the Zimmerman acquittal for murdering Trayvon Martin. This is the sentiment that made the Inmates for Action a formidable organization that dealt with police violence inside the Atmore Holman prison. Mufundi said, we learned early in the hood that respect is earned. Respect is demanded. Respect is not given voluntarily. We must stop crying and wringing our hands over such racist murders and verdicts. We stay in crisis mode, one crisis after another. When will it end? It will end when we end it. If we can't protect each other, surely we can avenge each other. That is all I have to say about the Zimmerman case. <laughs> Mufundi has surely won his place among the patriotic African martyrs. Long live Mufundi Lake. Here we have the APSP Southern Region participating with uh, the Mufundi Memorial with Carolyn Winnie Lake. Again, as uh, Co Comrade Kobina Bantusango. And um, okay. um, the sponsor prisoner program needs a coordinator that will document and organize prisoner letters, initiate responses to some, reviewing letters to be printed in the spear and struggling with prisons that reject the spear. Keep the black re revolution alive by selling the spear or All right, Uhuru, so now it's time for the Black Power 96.3 FM <laughs> Ripples. I prayed to abort the process, I prayed to speak. Johnson is trying to build a state-of-the-art school for black boys that y'all all know I need. Trifling ass black people. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> You are 
are listening to Black Power 96.3 FM WBKU LP St. Petersburg. We have the interest of the people at heart. Black power is more than just a phrase. It's a call to action. When you listen to Black Power 96.3 FM, know that's what you're supporting. Right on. Black Power 96.3 WBPU is your radio. We can't function without you. And that is the power of the community, but you have to exercise that power. We have destroyed the idea that African people uh, cannot create their own media independent of white power. And that means that we have to do what's necessary to make it successful. It's your boy, Dia Joy Bringer. This is Radio station, the people radio station. 96.3 SA Black Power. Black Power. St. Petersburg. Oh my goodness, girl, yes, girl, yes. Leave it right here. And now we present to you your Black Power 96.3 FM staff. Underwriting program manager, Robert Quinones. Engineering construction coordinator, Sandy Thompson. Black Power 96 bookkeeper, Lisa Watson. And last, but certainly not least, your station manager, Diakiese Lungisani. Uh-uh, put some music on up in here. Okay, girl, hold on, I got you. Let me turn oh, this on real quick. Um, before we begin this report, I just really want to express my appreciation to all of our leadership, Chairman Omali Eshetela and Deputy Chairwoman Onifene Eshetela, um, and you know, all of the contributions that you both have made, you know, to the struggle for the liberation of African people. Um, I would also like to express my, my most deepest and profound admiration for my direct leadership Director Akile Anai. Um, I remember when I first met the director, and she remembers it a little differently. But um, <laughs> I met her November 2016 at uh, a Black is Back Coalition event where we marched on the White House, and she barely even spoke to me. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, girl, all right. <laughs> but uh, literally, that weekend feels like years ago, like years ago. And I was there with her when she received the call from chairman that she was going to assume the role as director for the department. And we cried together. Um, and then we sat down and we ate pancakes. <laughs> um, but even then, at that moment, um, you know, we already knew that the department was going to be transformed and under her leadership, the department has been transformed and it's just been astronomical. Akile is the truth. She is the truth. And you know, we have conversations where she continuously tells me that, you know, dear, you gotta have confidence in your leadership. And I'm seeing that every single day. Um, I don't, you know, some people don't really, you know, understand, you know, what exactly Director Akile did when she ran for office in St. Petersburg, Florida. And that had a profound effect on me, you know, um, in my development. And, you know, it's this video that I tell her about all the time uh, where she goes uh, to this gathering that was put together by uh, Charlie Christ, I think that's his name, Chris. Um, where he gathered a group of African children to speak about the so-called uh, car theft epidemic in St. Petersburg, and she lit his ass up. And I still, I still watch that video, you know, sometimes for inspiration. And, you know, Director Akile has been one of the most um, prime examples of what an African internationalist is and what African internationalism can do for the development of African people. And I just really want to lift her up and appreciate my leadership. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, so um, I want to begin by expressing my appreciation to all of my comrades and salute the party on a magnificent 7th Congress. I want to thank everyone out there who is a supporting or sustaining member of our radio station, Black Power 96.3 FM. 
Um, I am able to stand here today and profess to all of you that we have successfully raised our radio time. <laughs> This victory is uh, one that cannot be overstated. The raising of our tower is a profound strike against the colonial media apparatus and is indicative of a future that will be shorn of the white ruling class's tools of propaganda. Under the leadership of our party and the Department of uh, um, excuse me, under the leadership of our party in the African People's Education and Defense Fund, Black Power 96 is a weapon in our department of agitation and propaganda used on the front line in this war of ideas. Black Power 96.3 FM, like our newspaper, places into context the colonized existence of African people all around the world, dispels the narrative that imperialism is omnipotent and continues to promote and represent self-determination and self-reliance for our people. Through our broadcasting, we continue to tell the real stories of African people in our struggles for freedom. Black Power 96 reflects the courage and the genius of African people, the originators of the best in music and culture. Black Power 96.3 FM must become the most popular radio station in the African community of St. Petersburg and around the world. Black Power 96 must become the place where Africans go when they want their music to be heard, their business promoted, and their stories told. Black Power 96.3 FM must become, well, excuse me, must realize and understand its purpose as an avenue for African people to enter into political life. Even though we are a mass institution, we must recognize that our connection to the African community goes beyond employing our sisters and brothers as volunteers. Yeah. We must internalize our position in relation to the party's long-term goal of liberating our people and Mother Africa. Members of our party must recognize this as well and must participate in the building of Black Power 96 like all of our other magnificent institutions. Like the Black Power Blueprint and so many other institutions of our party, Black Power 96 is an institution of dual and contending power, Uhuru. All right, so now we shall begin. So, radio has long been a powerful weapon in the hands of colonized peoples fighting for our freedom. From the earliest use of radio in the African Revolution through today, control of radio technology lets us speak directly to the people without interference from our oppressors. Radio played a key role in the African struggle to oust the French occupiers from Algeria. In the early 60s, Radio Free Dixie, produced by Robert and Mabel Williams from their asylum in Havana, Cuba, um, broadcast to listeners all throughout the U.S. And the Sandinistas used radio broadcast to communicate with the Nicaraguan people to build support for the guerrilla war that overthrew the brutal neo-colonial government of Somoza in 1979. Oh. So today, we are fighting to bring African internationalism through the airwaves to our people as we declare our party to be the vanguard of the African Revolution. The chairman has always taught us to occupy every space, to fight in every arena that is available to us, and our party is doing brilliant work using the various online social media tools that are popular today. And our movement is seeing increasing attacks on this form of communications. Our Facebook posts and our messages are blocked, and we are denied the ability to boost our post. Our videos are taken down by YouTube. We continue to fight these attacks, to work around them wherever possible, and to maintain our presence in these powerful spaces. Meanwhile, we have built our own FM radio station, a unique weapon in the war of ideas we're waging. With the Black Prime 96 radio station, we own and control the means of production. Yeah. 
We own the technology to communicate directly with our people. We own the tower and the land that it was built on. We own the broadcast antenna and the transmitter. We own the studio, the mixing board, the microphones. Mm. And as long as we can guard and protect these resources, as long as we have electricity, and as long as African people have radios in their cars and houses, we can communicate directly with our people without interference from the state, without interference from Mark Zuckerberg, from Bill Gates, or any of them. Black Power 96.3 FM shines as a beacon of truth and freedom in a sea of colonial lies, corporate brainwashing, and cultural manipulation. Black Power 96's programming advances the African revolution, raising the voice of the African working class and providing vanguard leadership to unify the African nation. Omali Taught Me is a political study conducted by our chairman, Omali Yeshitela. Omali Taught Me was brought to Black Power 96 to provide the chairman's political analysis of the conditions faced by African people located everywhere. My People's Keeper discusses the special oppression and issues affecting trans and gender and sexually non-conforming African people, actively closing the gap between GSNAs and the rest of the African nation. The Political Power Hour is where we air speeches from revolutionary leaders, past and present, who have fought and are fighting for the liberation of our people. From black nerd culture, to what's trending in the world, to discussing political issues, no class is a place where young African leaders are able to voice their experiences with no restrictions, no teachers or adults looking over their shoulders, and no topic too extreme. Good Morning Africa was initiated to fill the largest listening block of time in radio, the morning drive time slot. This popular show had begun to effectively compete with the corporate syndicated shows like Tom Joyner and The Breakfast Club. Hosted by party members, it blended a lively mix of trending topics, international music mixes, local traffic, and weather reports, along with an, inf African, inf an African internationalist discussion of current events. Our live Facebook stream of the show engaged viewers from around the world. Due to the essential responsibilities of the cadre hosting this show, last month we had to put it on hold. But after our Congress, we will be revisiting on how to rebuild this important show. <laughs> Black Power 96 also broadcasts special programs from throughout the African world. The first Sunday Jazz Hour is produced by our dear friend and supporting member, DJ Asada. It's a showcase of jazz music and its influence on music from other genres. Out of Toronto, Canada, producer host Jalali, AKA Norman Richmond, provides an all African mix of music and politics. As he says, diasporic music is made in the West, but is not of the West. Comrade Jalali is also a regular contributor to the Burning Spear newspaper where he brings his extensive history and network of contacts to a review of African, of African culture and politics. Black Power 96 also airs the weekly broadcast of Black Agenda Radio produced by Glenn Ford, senior editor of the Black Agenda Report and co-founder of the Black is Back Coalition. This dynamic show is co-hosted by Nelly Bailey, leader in the Harlem Tenants Union and features news, features news commentary and analysis from the black left. Black Power 96 is building a strong team of talented local volunteer programmers who connect the station to the community, providing security and a growing pool of listeners, donors, and volunteer staff. Some of these programmers have come to us from, pre from a previous career on WRXB, a local AM gospel station that shut down in December of last year. Eddie Maltzby, host of the Florida Blind Boys, is one of, the, uh, one of these programmers. He is extremely well known within the community and has brought his base to the Black Power 96 family. DJ Heavy Love also came to the Black Power 96 station from another radio station, the Southern Soul, Ex the Southern Soul Express. He highlights one, 
One of the most popular but hardly known genres of black music, Southern Soul. The Love Train is a sultry journey into the night with, slow, with soul jams. New and old, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, soul jams, new and old, that will rock you to sleep every Monday night. Attracted to Black Power 96's professionalism and organization, DJ Heavy Love has provided his great musical taste and determination to spread the word about Black Power 96. <laughs> the Porch is hosted by our very own Charles Oliver, <laughs> AKA Monkey Paw. Comrade Charles brings a brilliant mix of old and new hip hop, old school, political, um, dance, and love songs. Black Power 96 is working to develop programming that makes African internationalism more prominent in our 24 seven programming. As an instrument of the party, Black Power 96 must be able to provide an African internationalist analysis for the deepening crisis of imperialism winning the masses to this revolutionary theory that ensures the liberation of all African people. This will be done through daily newscasts, production of timely public affairs features, or mini documentaries. Promotion of African internationalism through short um, dynamic, in, dynamic editorial productions and promotions of APEDF and other party organizations through PSAs. We want to recognize some of the excellent Black Power 96 volunteers, including Damiris, Gail, Anthony, but also Raymond, Devin, DeGale, Megan, Amira, and Chianti. So shout out to those comrades. As the chairman has taught us, the people are everything. Black Power 96 is radio by and for the people. The Black Power 96 supporting membership program has four main components. Number one, growing the base of our listeners to include 50% of the people in our new expanded listening area. Number two, winning those listeners to become supporting members by donating money or time. Number three, developing volunteers into, uh, excuse me, developing volunteers into team members and leaders. And number four, developing donors into monthly sustaining members. Black Power 96 meets new people through our on the ground outreach, which includes going door to door in the community with surveys asking about people's radio preferences, outreach tables at local concerts and community events, putting up posters around town in local businesses and busy areas. And in 2018, we initiated the Operation Blackout Outreach Campaign. Our goal is to make half of our residents in our listening area into, to, to turn, excuse me, into loyal listeners, members, and volunteers. Black Power 96 has sponsored several well-attended events since our launching, including two African Nation Family Reunion block parties on July 4th of 2017 and 2018, establishing a tradition that gives our community an opportunity to be a patriot of Africa instead of being subjected to the white nationalist 4th of July an African Community Media Leadership Awards brunch, a Black August event in 2017 that packed the house in support, uh, in support from the community for the movement of resistance of Africans in prison, and outdoor concerts on the Black Power 96 soundstage at the Uhura House. Black Power 96 is working to spread African internationalism far and wide, making it accessible to Africans everywhere on the FM airwaves, on the web, and their, on their mobile devices. We will be focusing on working with movement organizations in the regional hubs to make sure that they are armed with literature and promotion for Black Power 96 and how people can tune in um, and support the station via the mobile app.
Selected Black Power 96 programs are being aired on WMXP at 95.5 FM in Greenville, South Carolina, led by Comrade Afia and Guaza, a co-founder of the Black is Back Coalition. Another African-owned radio station in Washington, in, excuse me, in Wilmington, Delaware, is preparing to run, the, uh, run this chairman's speeches as well. We use all methods to encourage people to come to our Saturday volunteer orientations and work days. In the coming period, we will be implementing the full NTU volunteer recruitment program developed by the Office of Deputy Chair to give new volunteers an orientation to APEDF and Black Power 96's mission, track record, and work that can plug them right that they can plug into right now. This will include volunteer appreciation, trainings and political development to develop our volunteers to their highest potential as official team members and coordinators of areas of work. We want to, who, sound, a sound though, where the sound at though, there we go. Um, we want to recognize some of the, wait, that's not it. Ooh, skip that. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Okay, there it is. Black Powered 96 turns listeners into donors, and our base of supporting members is growing. In 2018, our total number of donors increased by 67% compared to 2017, and sustaining members increased by 50%. Our goal is to grow the sustaining membership to cover operating expenses. Then we we use a Feb February and July member drive membership drive and special fundraisers like hashtag Giving Tuesday and the end of the year from fundraising to fund special projects and improvements to the station. There are three membership levels. The Nina Simone level is for people who donate from $5 to $95 one time or who sign up for um, to donate $5 per month. The Bob Marley level is for people who donate 96 to 295 one time or who sign up to den uh, donate $10 from, per month. The Marcus Garvey level is for people who donate 269 and up one time and who sign up to donate $25 per month. And if someone doesn't have any resources at any given time, they can sign up to save $96 in 96 days. With the understanding that the political and economic are one, Black Power 96 is striving to be economically self-sufficient. Currently, Black Power 96 is funded through four main streams of revenue. Number one is one-time direct donations from individuals. This makes up the majority of our income. Number two is monthly sustaining members, and it makes up the next largest chunk, 15% combined. So um, supporting members make up to 82% of the total station income. Number three is um, special events. That is ticket sales and vending fees from events like MLK, um, MLK Day and the African Nation Family Reunion Block Party. Last is underwriting, which is donations from businesses that make up to 5%. In the next period, the station will continue to grow the supporting membership program with the goal to reach a level of sustaining members that covers the monthly operating expenses and use twice a year member drives to raise additional funds for special projects to um, improve the station. And we will massively grow the base of underwriting support from the business in the community and online businesses that want to reach our audience around the country. Underwriting is an important stream of revenue for Black Power 96. It is a way for, the, um, for Black Power 96 to develop relationships with supportive businesses and to build a strong network of businesses dedicated to black community economic development. Oh. 
This network and the ability for small independent businesses to be exposed on the radio airwaves helps achieve APEDF's mission to address the grave disparities in economic development faced by the African community. Black Power 96 has received underwriting support from community businesses including Love Food Central, Food Max, Moon Dust Coffee, Rick and Vince's Wangs and Thangs, Gordon Healthcare Training, Heavy, Heavy's Food Truck, and Chief's Creole Cafe. The Mojave Theater has been a regular underwriter uh, for Black Power 96 and has provided tickets to A-list performers and concerts. As our party continues to gain prominence, BP96 is sure to experience expansive growth. The raising of BP96's radio tower shows that this is already in motion. Underwriting will be a valuable tool on the economic front. We aim to um, have a relationship with every African-owned business in the South, um, the South Side St. Pete, providing a means of self-determination and economically unifying the African nation. We are also targeting concert venues and promoters who have a need and a budget to promote on um, to promote their shows. Having a nice time karaoke night will serve to unite the Southside African community and surrounding areas through the fun of karaoke. It will also serve as a revenue stream to bring resources into Black Power 96.3 FM. This will be a great, fun, and creative way to build this fantastic institution's base and deepen our presence in the community. Black Pride 96.3 FM offers us the ability to take our skills back into our own hands. This includes technical engineering and radio broadcasting, training for free. People pay thousands of dollars for a degree in these skills that we are learning every day through hands-on work with the station. Going forward, we will be working with the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project to develop WUBP 100.1 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. Another community radio station serving our community with fresh African internationalist programming. 100.1 FM plans to feature a mix of 24-7 of plans to feature a 24-7 mix of political education speeches and African old school jams. Our radio reach is growing. You have been tuned in to Black Pride 96.3 FM, where we're not just explaining the world, but changing it. <laughs> Thank you to the, to the best proofreader in the room, <laughs> Chairman Amalia Shatilla. <laughs> Get it off the screen. <laughs> so, right. It wasn't in the Bernie Spear, though. <laughs> all right, all right. So how's everybody feeling right now? Feeling good? Uh -huh. So we have a few more reports. There's a lot that goes on here in the uh, Department of Agitation and Propaganda, a lot that we are responsible for. So uh, we got a, a couple more presentations, a part of this overall report. And the next is um, the economic question of agitation and propaganda. <clears throat> I'm excited for this one. So the economic and political are one, building Burning Spear Media as an institution. What I do? OK. Building Burning Spear Media as an institution of Black Star Industries. So the, the Department of Agitation and Propaganda is taking our economic development work to the next level. Ad through Agiprop programs and services like our multimedia services, shared services programs, co-sponsorship program, and at this point, this is when you guys are really need to start referencing the uh, materials in your packet. Um, and also party merchandise and publications, such as our posters, greeting cards, African nation flags, t-shirts, buttons, etc. <clears throat> But first, 
first, we just want to salute Chairman Amalia Chatello for giving us the understanding that politics is concentrated economics and that in order for this revolution to be successful, we must be economically self-reliant. So Burning Spear Media was made an institution of Black Star Industries, and we've seen the amazing work that has come out of the office of the deputy chair under the leadership of Ona Zanea Ishtela. We saw it um, in the beginning uh, days of our Congress, and we see it throughout. We're standing in a project of the office of the deputy chair right here, the Uru House. So. Black Star Industries falls under the leadership of ODC, and if Burning Spear Media is going to be an institution of Black Star Industries, the work has to reflect that of Black Star Industries. And this quote was pulled from the political report to the Seventh Congress, keeping in mind that the chairman made an almost identical quote to this one in the 2017 plenary report to, um, in January of last year. Quote, it is also important to remind the director of Agiprop of its tremendous capacity for economic development. In fact, it is accurate to say that next to the economic work under the leadership of the Office of Deputy Chair, the department has greater potential for economic development than any other department or committee of the party. Agitation, uh, so, you know, it's literally staring at us right in the face, the potential for Agiprop to bring resources in this, into this department. Agitation and prop... Agitation and propaganda are custodians of the party's line. We hold the party's line in the form of books, DVDs, posters, radio. We have the ability to promote African nationality, put it everywhere, put it out there everywhere. It needs to be in everybody's faces. We have skills that can be transformed into services for the revolution. Those skills have been displayed throughout this entire Congress. So the capacity to be economically self-sufficient is obvious. In the next period, Burning Spur Media will grow massively. Not just in reach, but in products we offer. We have our amazing books, such as the, the quotations of Chairman Amalia Shetela, An Uneasy Equilibrium, One Africa, One Nation, and so much more. We want to add to our list of products offered by Building Burning Spirit Media's official product line. We need a product line, brand themed product line, where you can get, um, you know, all your, you can get Africans, Afri African national, um, na oh, Jesus Christ, get the words out. Um, you know, like, you know, products like stationery, like red black and green stationery, posters, DVDs, all these things that we've been talking about. We want to develop a product line of, you know, from coming from this department. And in 2019, we will double our sales in Burning Spear publication. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We ain't playing. We ain't playing. And this is based on a few different factors. I'm not just saying this because I just have it in my head. I, you know, we will <laughs> double our sales in Burning Spirit Publications, and here's how. Uh, Burning Spirit Publications is launching a product line, as I just mentioned and uh, flubbed over, with standard items like buttons, posters, and greeting cards. But we will increase our inventory, as well as the variety of products, by adding African nation stationary products, party fashion gear, and more trendy items that promote the nation and African internationalism. How, again, how are you going to, um, you know, uh, increase the sales of Burning Spear publications in 2018? Well, we're going to push the sales of distributor kits throughout the, throughout the movement, especially in every region where the party intends to build regional hubs. These kits come with multiple copies of the different books printed by Burning Spear publications. In this next period, we will also get the Burning Spear, as well as our books, into different stores across the U.S., making it our mission to get African-owned and progressive bookstores across the country to be top carriers of our books. And did you know that some of our books are available on Kindle and other ebook devices? We intend to push and promote our ebooks and generate sales through this platform, making the book accessible to anyone around the world with electronic reading devices. And Burning Spear Marketplace site revamp. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, you hear that? Exactly. We know that the promotions work of our books and other products is extremely critical, and our focus is to organize the publications office to take on the promotional aspect of our work. We also will be launching our Burning Spur Marketplace site revamp to make it more visually dynamic and user-friendly with updated products and price listings. And now, I'm extremely excited to announce, the Department of Agitation and Propaganda is extremely excited to announce the launch of Burning Spear AV Vanguard Audiovisual Services. Yeah. <laughs> With Burning Spear
Student Spirit AV, we will accomplish professionalizing multimedia services, services at movement events to facilitate and ensure the best possible program. We'll train members of our party on various aspects of AV, lighting, soundboard engineering, filming, recording, live streaming, DJing, etc. We'll create a consistent revenue stream for the Department of Agitation and Propaganda by performing AV services. We do this all the time. We do this all the time performing AV services, traveling all across the country to perform AV services for different events. And this is something that we can, the department should be making resources from. And we have to institutionalize it to make that possible. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So. And lastly, we're gonna, we want to open party AV services to outside events at Aquaba Hall. People come book Aquaba Hall all the time and other venues where people from outside of our movement can hire us. You're having a party at different venues and stuff like that and you need a, um, you know, a Agiprop or AV team with reasonable prices and you know, it's black owned, those kind of things. This is it. This is going to be the AV team that is going to conduct all those services outside of our movement. And if you look inside your packets, you will see our beautiful, gorgeous business cards. Yes. <laughs> And, you know, we learn and develop different skills, and Comrade Dia actually mentioned it. We get, on, we get on the job training and become professionals all while serving the success of our different events. These are skills that white power will demand you to pay thousands of dollars for, to learn it in a classroom. We acquire these skills. We do it. Acquire these skills in the process to further drive out white power and equip our people to be masters with our own equipment. We don't need you, Crackle. <laughs> so another program we are going to reinstate is the Shared Services Program. This program was initiated back in 2015 and dissolved without proper leadership. And I want to shout out Ann Wo, right here, Comrade President Gedge Day, um, because this comrade and this organization um, was, has been the only organization that has been our most consistent contributor to this program since its institution, I mean, since its initiation. And when it was in limbo, she was like, what's going on? And um, I was like, oh, I have no idea. And then when we found out, she was like, oh, no, I'm going to keep paying, um, you know, because recognizing the significance of Agiprop. So we want to uh, appreciate Comrade Yedja Day for that. And in your packets, you're going to see the breakdown of the shared services program. So all of our organizations get ready for it. You guys know it um, is coming. So the shared services program is similar in fundraising capacity to a sustaining membership-based organization, right? You pay membership dues, etc. Where each month, different departments and organizations of our party would be required to pay a monthly fee to Agiprop for the unrecognized day-to-day -day work that Burning Spear Media does in promotions, web IT, and et cetera. It's a lot of unrecognized stuff that we do on a daily basis. Um, and you know, you gotta recognize it. It's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and you see here, you, it's very quick, easy process. Monthly payment from party departments that will sustain Agiprop. Agiprop will provide promotional and advertising services. Each department benefits from promotions as well as web, IT, security, and trainings. Web, IT, security, all those kinds of things fall right under this department. And this department is the thing that provides it. So um, what comes with shared services? Well, with your monthly payments, each department and organization is entitled to all of these things listed. And you are able to see how important each task is in the daily work of your department and organization. When it's broken down, you're staring, staring at it right in the face, you realize how, you know, the work that Agiprop does on a daily basis. So we got promotions through the Burning Spear newspaper, radio PSAs, Burning Spear online and party social media, web IT work, centralized website management, web IT tools and protocol development, online web IT and security, which also requires, you know, the um, developing of equipment, having to purchase new equipment, all these kinds of things. That's what this um, department is responsible for. And archiving, DAP investment in digital hard drive storage, maintaining video records of all major movement events, storing and digitizing of events. That's what we have to do. So our party has to support, um, you know, the work and objectives of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. So Uhuru. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. And the next thing is our co Burning Spear Media co sponsor program. Building Burning Spear Media as an institution of Black Star Industries couldn't happen properly without the co sponsorship program. This program is laid out in your folders as well, if you want to look at that sheet right quick. 
And a shout out to Comrade Tiffany Murphy, who works in the office of deputy chair in Philadelphia for having followed this program to the letter for the Philadelphia Book Fair, <laughs> flea markets events, ever since this program was initiated. Um, and what does this program entail? Burning Spirit Media serving as the official media sponsor for all party and movement events. What does this entail? Burning Spear Media will promote an event on all our platforms and provide AV consultation upon request in exchange for acknowledgement at the event, promotion of BSP on event literature and vending space. So how this program helps economic development. While this program doesn't um, bring in obvious resources, as in there are no costs associated to this program, on Burning Spear Media's end and the event hosts with, oh, hold on. So there's no cost associated on Burning Spear Media's end or on the uh, event sponsor's end. Uh, so it's not a very obvious way to make resources, but building the co-sponsored program means we expand our base of support and raise our profile on the one hand, and we are able to make money through vending opportunities in the other promising income generation. All right, so based on an estimated annual projection, we expect that 52% of DAP's income will be generated through our publications and products, 23% through Burning Spear AV, 20% through Shared Services Program, and 5% through co-sponsorship. You may notice that the Burning Spear newspaper is not reflected in this chart, and this is already, um, well, you know, just the point that the Burning Spear newspaper has to be its own vehicle to bring in resources. It has to be economically self-sufficient on its own. It's something that we have to tackle, so that's why it's not in this uh, particular chart. This is the general fund for the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. And as mentioned earlier, recruiting members to take on these full-time positions is going to be one of our most important tasks. Someone who is over economic development, because if you don't get somebody to fill it, if you don't get somebody over it, it's not going to get done. So we have to recruit in the position of um, the Office of Economic Development within Agiprop work and the necessary managers to see to it that all of our programs are successful. This is what we have to do. We want to go beyond ideas. This work that we're talking about has to be real. We have to accomplish all of these goals that we've set before ourselves. The question of Agiprop's economic capacity will be realized in the next era. So we must be able to fund the war of ideas forward to making Burning Spirit Media economically self-reliant. Uhuru. All right. So uh, we have just a little bit of time left, but we have like two more presentations. But um, I did want to say, uh, Dia, can you hand me one of those blue folders really quick? Because um, some of the things that I did want to talk about, well, one was already mentioned about archiving the party's history. And that there is 50 years worth of history in the Uhuru House in St. Petersburg, Florida. And um, a part of the presentation was actually um, going into how we were going to develop the program of archiving the hi party's history. So um, that is part of the work of the um, Department of Agitation and Propaganda, in fact, we have a resolution over it um, to have completed or um, ha you know, at least be halfway through the process of archiving the party's history by the next Congress. So that is something that we will be taking on in this next era. And one last thing I wanted to note, uh, because we won't be able to go over it. Um, so Agiprop is in the process of creating a, or completing a cybersecurity manual. Um, it's something that we've been tasked uh, with because we understand that in this war of ideas, these platforms, the Facebooks and all those things don't belong to us. And in fact, our operations, tools of the state, and they get access to you, um, your person, your family, everything. They have access to you. They can find you on these uh, platforms. And and um, also other, other things other than social media, we're talking about cybersecurity, um, having access to our web databases and making sure that we can't be hacked and all these different kinds of things. So Agiprop is developing the cybersecurity manual, which will be completed um, in the beginnings of next year as well. So we have some... <laughs> We have some cybersecurity rules for organizers, um, securing uh, documents and data and things like that. But the uh, important one that I wanted to go on record for, so I just want to make sure that everybody um, knows that we said it, that we said it and we, um, we meant it, was, um, where was it? Uh-oh, do I have it? It's the, um, talking about social media uh, protocols. And, um, oh, it's not in here, okay. So um, it's kind of like a, well, there's a protocol for all movement websites and social media accounts, like in terms of what you do when you um, create a social media account, because right now we have how many social media pages? Over 100 social media pages. That's insane. We have to 
minimize that because we have to have control of our social media platforms. Uh, we lose control quickly when we develop all these different pages and they have to be accountable to the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. We have to have access to it. But the one thing um, was the, no, I have that. Um, it was the protocols for posting on social media. And you know, for the time being, while we have this tool, we have to be very security minded about how we're using it. And again, it is a tool of the state and we don't want to put personal information out there that gives the state the ability to attack us. Um, we kind of just open it up for them. At one point in time, they had to search for the information, and now we just give it to them. Um, and it's a, it's a really serious error. We can't, we have to be very careful. In, in this period, we're heating up. The party is heating up around the world, and revolution is becoming the main trend. And this platform is going to be shut off from us, but more importantly, it's going to be used against us. So we have to be security-minded when we're posting on social media. It is not our friend. This is my friend. My comrade's my friend. Social media is not my friend. The people in the African community who are selling burning spirit to, that's our friend. Okay, the people we recruit to this party, that's our friend. Social media is not our friend. And also, just the last thing on that is that we won't need their social media anymore because burning, the burningspirit.com is going to be the primary source online where we get all of our information, where we're connected to one another, and that's going to be the platform that they can't shut down. So thank you all so much. This has been the report from Agitation and Propaganda. The world. One Africa. One nation. Uhuru. Vanguarda. What a amazing presentation. Deciona was sitting by me and she was just like, oh, now I know what they do when they produce the burning spear. Like there's so many different layers in order to make that work happen. So I just really appreciate that. And also like all the great developments that are happening to ensure that you know, we can own our own media and put it out in the world. And so, I, do we have time for questions and answers program? Yes. We do, okay. So, um, Kile may want to come up to the stage and, because I got some questions, but I, I'm going to open it up for discussion and questions from the audience. Um, take any questions. Anybody coming up? Yes, I see some some questions happening. No? Yeah. A lot of movement. Comment. A comment? comment yes. Go ahead. Don't touch the mic. Uhuru. Uhuru, Kyle, could you turn me up? Brandy. Thank you. Uhuru, um, I just really want to appreciate um, the Department of Agitation and Propaganda, um, Director Keeley's leadership, and um, I, I want to, to unite on the social media posting protocols as far as um, our personal. I know I, um, people look at me strange, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was I was watching um, a documentary on um, Rakim Balagoon, um, and and he was the first um, black identity extremist that was prosecuted under that that title, um, and he how they gathered all the information or the evidence so-called of his of the activities was through social media and what he was posting it was not anything that they no hardcore evidence or anything like that they just saw what he was doing and what he was posting so you know i just wanted to just unite with the um the, the social media protocols of, of you know especially you know party members posting to our personal pages i remember um i posted something early on like you know, um, a long time ago when I first entered the party, not a long time ago, a couple of years, but, um, um, and I said, um, I said something to Chairman, Chairman told me to take it down, and I said something like, um, but it's my social media page, it's my social media page, and he's like, is it? <laughs> he said something to that effect, and then, you know, I, I, I really understand the, um, the, the importance of us, um, following the protocols and um, those protocols that's being laid out will certainly give us um, 
enable us to, to, to be armed and, and make sure that we don't compromise our position or our, our party's goals. So I just wanted to make that comment. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. um, I really want to appreciate um, the whole team and Director Akile um, and Naya's uh, portion of the presentation was showing the first spear and it just brought me back to um, uh, during my sponsorship with Cobina, like having to learn about the importance of this spear and having our own paper and propaganda in that way because social media may not always be available to us, especially, you know, when once the revolution gets to a certain point. Um, so I think it's a very important, and I just really want to appreciate all of y'all work, um, because initially coming into the party, I really um, didn't realize the significance of the spear and having our own paper and social media and things like that. Um, and it just really makes me, especially Naya's portion of the presentation, really brought me back to like reading about um, the Algerian revolution and how important it was with the paper. And then also to um, Black Power 96, like having our own radio and how we have to stop listening to their propaganda, their radio stations, um, and uh, just how um, during their revolution, they cut off their, um, the colonizers' radios, and that's how they were able to communicate with each other um, in the mines and all those type of things. So I just really want to express my deepest appreciation for um, this committee and for this, um, this team and for making it happen. And for those of us that don't realize the importance of it and the significance of it, you know, initially. Um, and I just hope after your presentation that everybody here and everybody that listens to Black Power 96 that reads the spear realizes and recognizes the significance of what you all do. So I just really want to express appreciation to you all. Thank you. Um, I wanted to appreciate uh, this Ajapop report as well. Um, I, you know, I think it's a, it's a, the different institutions within Ajapop are all dynamic. Um, you know, the Burning Spear, Black Pie 96, which I still think we have the best radio station, period. Uh, I, did, I did have just one question, which is just regarding the app. Um, I know that we had a first version of the app, and then we got a second version. Will it be a third version just to, um, you know, address things like, I mean, I you can skip the login, but that for that not even to be because you know that can be a turn off for some people. Like, what I gotta log in, and not even, not even um, skip it or just the functionality. If shows are live, can they watch us on the app um, besides just listening? Um, because you know we have the benefit of being in St. Pete. We don't need the app um, or the website. But you know, for those who are where Black Brown ninety six is not, not yet at. Oh, uh -huh. um, yes. Um, you know, we've, upon the, the version that we have now, we've been facing a lot of contradictions with this app. Um, you know, people download it and sometimes it doesn't play and, you know, other various contradictions that we've experienced. And the app developer that we're working with now, they don't specialize in, you know, radio apps. It's uh, like a retail app developer for like clothing and things of okay. that nature. Um, and you know, upon the research that I've done, you know, to, um, to find out how much it would cost to get an app customized for Black Power 96, it's like maybe, um, <laughs> it's like maybe $10,000. And so um, coming out of this Congress, because you know, even before coming into um, the Congress, before coming to St. Louis, and I've been approached by some comrades here who've been telling me, you know, about different problems that they've been having with the app. Um, it's, we are going to be meeting with this developer um, because she developed the app that we have now for free. Okay. And so, um, you know, it's just going to be a process of going, you know, revisiting the contradictions and overturning them. And then, you know, we're not even saying that it's not a possibility for, um, it's not out of the realm of poss possibilities for Black Pride 96 to raise the resources to get our own customized app as well, too. So, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uhuru, uh, I really want to appreciate the report. Um, I think it was a dynamic report and appreciate your leadership, uh, Director Keele. I, I do think that we need to do a recount on the, on the uh, <laughs> spill seller, you know what I'm saying, see who's the best spill seller. But, uh, 
I really, I really, um, <laughs> I, I appreciate it, I appreciate it, I appreciate it. You know, I mean, it's nothing like the spill. It's nothing like the spill. And, uh, but I do want to put that out there. But also, I want to ask, uh, <laughs> I want to ask, like, because I think it's important, uh, the spill. <laughs> I want to, I want to, like, uh, one thing we have been talking in the Southern region is really encouraging people to write for the spill. And uh, it really stood out to me when you talked about, like, training people how to write for the spill. And I want to make sure we're clear on how is that process going to happen. Because as we organize in the community, and you'll find some people just be looking for the spill, and uh, they even have a lot to say. But really, how, do we, how does that process happen? How do, we, how do we connect with it? And how do we also to con connect you know, people in the community with that process to be able to write for the spill? Uhuru. Uhuru. Um, I appreciate that question. And um, in terms of uh, like the Burning Spear online, uh, burningspear.com, people can go on there um, and, you know, sign up for the spear and even say what they prefer to participate in. Internally, we've had people um, request spear writers trainings, and Comrade Olefin has actually conducted those for quite a few members, um, including um, MPDUM's Info and Ed Department um, conducted a writer's training for. Um, and uh, so it's upon request, also visiting theburningspear.com. It's something that we need to think about putting in the burning spear as well, just saying, you know, like, you know, contributors want, you know, send, submit your letter to the editor, write for the Burning Sphere newspaper, things like that. Different ways we can promote it, put it out there that is available. Um, but just in terms of within our own movement, like I said, the burningspear.com or upon request, um, requesting it from the Burning Sphere newspaper, um, myself as editor in chief, and, you know, we'll get that set up. So bring your writers. Uhuru. Uhuru, um, this is Ona Zane. Uh, I just really, really want to appreciate this workshop. And I also want to, I was actually um, in the NCC meeting when the chairman called you. And at first, when you, I just couldn't understand your response at first, you were just bawling. I was like, what's going on, you know? <laughs> but it was, you know, it, it was the right choice. You know, the chairman called it and made the right choice. You're, you're a tremendous leader. Um, you came in and you just swept the house and cleaned the house. And you know, look at the team that you built. It's just phenomenal. And I just really want to salute you and your, and your whole team. And I just want to say, too, that the whole uh, question of the production of the newspaper, O'Fallon, did I say your name right? Ophelin, all the way from Hawaii, you know, you came, you know, to make it happen. Anytime that I had any um, uh, challenges with my uh, spear article, I mean, you were right there on the spot trying to help us really put it together. I really want to appreciate just knowing the process that it has to go through because a lot of people don't even realize what it takes to produce that spear. And that uh, presentation was, you know, spot on. I really want to appreciate it. And just the whole, you know, um, history of uh, K. Fing and what he has brought to the Burning Spear newspaper. You know, it's just, you know, incredible. And I, and I do unite with what the chairman is saying, that we really need to sit down with our leaders and really capture them, you know, talking about the history of the party. I think it's really, really important. Um, and then I wanted to know, before I go there, I want to just really sh salute the Akese. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, Black Power um, 96 is part of APDF, and you have really did an outstanding job in representing APDF and the work that you have done and the leadership you and um, uh, Director Akili has come together, you know, under extreme circumstances. I know some of the things that have, you know, taken place over even the last month that you had to deal with, and you guys come, came together and really made it happen, so I really appreciate that. Um, also, the question of um, the prison um, uh, sponsorships, and I know within um, the ODC, you know, we're getting ready to kick off the African Independence Workforce Program, and I really want to know, like, how we can really partner with, um, you know, this particular program uh, to get prisoners, you know, we have a lot of, um, not a lot, but we have prisoners working in our institutions that you know come out and do a, uh, a tremendous job. We just want to see how we can bridge 
that gap to really work with that particular sponsorship program and you know somehow partner up together as well. Uhura. Uhura. Very nice. Let's call a meeting. <laughs> Just a tab, just a tab, just a tab. Okay. <laughs> Uhuru. I have a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to raise. So I just wanted to get clear around the H the Harriet's Daughters column. It's not written by even though I write most of the articles, I am the editor. So that means that any African woman can write an article and send it in for the Harriet's Daughters column, not just Ann Woe, not just me. Yes, so any African woman who wants to represent, you know, the struggles of the African working class can send it in to me before the 6th, and I can edit it and send it over to Bernie Spear Media. Um, so that's, I just wanted the clarity around that. And then also, I really want to struggle inside AMWO to have, because I asked the question before around the number of African women in prison who are getting uh, papers, and I thought I think the response was like we don't know, or the number is really insignificant. And I just think that that we have to be able to politicize African women in prison, because a lot of what we hear is about African men being politicized, and that's the forefront. But we, I want to see, and I want Anwo to be instrumental in politicizing African women in prison, and and even within our movement, whenever we we organize and talk about this whole prison question, that we also talk to men and women who may know you know, women who are in prison and get their information so that we can sponsor them. And I think that everybody's presentation was great. But I really want to appreciate the AKSA for the program, um, My People's Keeper, which I think is really profound. <laughs> because not only are African women leaders in this organization, but also not just the obvious homosexual, but there are other GSNA and um, trans people who are in this movement who are also leaders. And I just really want to raise that up um, before we move forward. And then finally, cybersecurity. This is a question, because I know this is a really deep and profound question. We talk about having our own, but we have to protect our own. And, and the state has so many different ways so deep and profound that we don't even know. And so I think that we have to build the capacity within our organization to have like IT hackers and, and people who are protecting, who know the intricacies of the web, because just getting um, uh, you know, somebody who knows something about security doesn't mean that they know something about security. And if we're talking about us being a revolutionary African organization that's going to be taking power in our hands, the state has the capacity of shutting down our websites. They have the capacity of blocking our cell phone towers. They have the capacity of doing that. So while this team is cute in number, we need a huge team of, of people in Agipop that can really take on all these different elements. And I know we don't have that capacity now, but I wanted to hear a little bit from Akile about what you see the direction in terms of that particular issue of cybersecurity. Uhuru, yeah, I wasn't able to go over it. Um, we have a whole PowerPoint really dealing with um, the cybersecurity question, but one thing, what you were saying, uh, it has to be a huge team of people, and we're gonna pull together that commission that has all of those abilities um, that, you know, the hackers, the web developers, all of those people that we need to identify for a cybersecurity commission, that's what we're going to do. Um, and it's something that we've attempted, like we pulled together something small just to deal with like fly by night kind of questions, but we really need to, to you know, like you said, just make it a real thing and build a, a, big, a big base of people who can do those kinds of things. Um, so right now it is very limited um, in terms of what we can do and we just try to solve the problems as they occur, but we wanna be ahead of the problem. So, um, but the Cybersecurity Commission is um, what we are developing within Agiprop. Uhuru. Uhuru, um, again, I just wanna appreciate your, your report and that goes to everyone up here. And I, I wanna say that I'm gonna thank you for featuring um, articles for, the, uh, the, for my particular community um, featuring with the young people, and because it, it really, they were very excited about seeing it, and um, so, um, do you? What do you think about? Um, like, when I take the burning spear, and I, I have the children come around sometime and sit down, and we read it together, and they look forward to it. And once they saw the spear, so they saw themselves in the spear, 
took it back to their grandmothers. And they're like, hey, go get me five more spears, you know. And I mean, the whole community was just so, ex they couldn't believe it, you know, that they would see themselves in it. So that's absolutely correct. It really it helps, it helps with you, um, you know, conveying your, you know, what we want to do to try to reach the community as a whole. Um, a suggestion or idea of having a junior spear for the young kids. Oh. Uh -huh. And keep up the good work. Um, I was just giving the five minute um, time signal, so just in terms of Q and A. Uh -huh. Chairman's um, also online. Just let y'all know. I see. I don't have a lot of questions. Okay. Uhuru, um, this is Hasu Batu um, from Office of Secretary General. Comrades, um, great presentation. I really appreciate it. Um, Dr. Dekile, great team. Um, one of my questions is regarding, um, I know before you had monthly, I think it was weekly spirit trainings or whatever, but do you guys plan on like not having weekly trainings, but maybe like some videos as far as like outreach or whatnot in that regard? Because Sometimes when I do outreach, I might come on a little too strong. <laughs> and some people, it just goes over their head because you can ask, you know, Jocelyn and a few other comrades, but sometimes I come on like, it's not mass friendly. I guess my approach is not, you know, yeah. But I guess videos in that regard, as far as training, you know, how to, I guess like as far as like over, a summary of the spirit, the monthly spirit as well, to make it, because I see like the um, solidarity forces they have like monthly spirit train, well, weekly spirit trainings or whatever the case may be, but also have like a summary video of like what to expect in the spirit, what's in it, and you know, so the mass can like, you know, see like, oh, I know what to look for into like this spear, and that's it for that month, so. Yeah, that's gonna come out of the office of, well, distribution of the Burning Spear newspaper is developing the trainings of how to sell the spear and the history of the spear. Um, and that's actually something that's being uh, put together, has already started in the works with Comrade Taylor. So that is coming. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I just really wanna appreciate um, Akile and this amazing team of Agiprop and um, just that presentation, and I'm just so excited for um, 2019 and everything that you're gonna accomplish that was on there, and I know that the way your imagination works, there's a lot of other things that are coming our way in 2019. Really wanna appreciate the leadership of Dia Kiese Lungisani. Yeah. And just wanna say, in the words of GSNA, you better work, girl! You better work. And you just have the right name, Joy Bringer, because no matter what the work is, you always do it with a smile. I've seen you, you know, late at night at 3 a.m. at the radio, just smile like, yeah, girl, I'm doing this. That's what it is, you know, my chairman, my chairman. So just really want to appreciate that. Even that one time when I had to come to the Agipop house because we had a security issue and we were about to fight somebody, and you came out there with your hair wrapped with a stick, you came out with a smile still, ready to fight. I said, yes. <laughs> And um, Akile, I can say so much um, about you, and I just want to say, though, that you, you know, are the product of what an Uhuru kid is. Somebody born and raised in this movement. And I want to say to all the party members that are listening, that are watching, that have children, when you are making struggles with yourself, internal struggles, that if you want to stay or go, you need to look at Akile and look at your child and see what you are robbing your child of when you leave. Look at what you are robbing your child of becoming when you leave. Because this is the product of being an Uhuru kid. Ease where they too. E Africa. Ease where they too. Okay, we only have one minute. And the chairman, I just want to get him. Uhuru. On the spot, the kid. Uhuru. Comrade Akili, appreciate the report and the incredible work that you are doing uh, to pull together Agiprop and make it become what it has to be. And I um, also want to appreciate your recognition of Comrade Timber. Um, one thing I just want to mention. I think in terms of the economic development work of the spear and selling ads and things like that, that we can begin with selling ads inside our own movement. You know, I, I think that's, uh, I mean, 
I mean, the various institutions in the movement should be buying ad space. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, there's the, uh, the, the things, the classified ads and stuff like that. I mean, it's one way we communicate with each other all around the country. We can do our little classified ads, like you can find in bourgeois media. But I also wanted to say that the sphere at any given time uh, represents, the character of the sphere represents where our struggle yeah. is. And uh, for example, much of what's in the sphere now, we are column heavy. And uh, because we are speaking mostly winning people like ourselves to the sphere. But that's, that's uh, also a reflection at this moment of the resources because we can only print once a month we only have a small number of pages. This is the smallest number of pages I think we've ever printed consistently, this 16 pages. And the reason I'm saying that is because we need more articles that's written by the person in the housing project, yes. that's written by the person who's on welfare, yes. that's written by the person who got beaten by the police. Yes. They are not going to be skilled writers, and that's all right because the person who's going to be interested in reading it are people like them. Yes. And that's who we're trying to bring into this part and into this work. I think we really have to anticipate that, that increasingly, and, and people talk a certain way, and they talk a certain way all around the country. African young people in these neighborhoods, they speak the same language when it comes to the pigs, when it comes to everything else. They need to be able to communicate to each other through this newspaper. And uh, this needs, newspaper needs to be able to communicate you know, to them as a consequence of that. That's how we organize in the housing projects in very, various other places, because when they open it, they need to be able to see themselves reflected in the way they talk, you know, the way they look. They need to look at each other and things like that. That's part of what we mean in terms of the class character of the newspaper as well. Right now, as I said, it's column heavy. Uh, and that's a reflection of where we are at a particular moment. We are trying to win people like us. We win people like us, then we go out in the world to win people, because we, we get the theory, we get the line, now we take it out to the world, and we win people who are not like us yet, but who can become us, and that's who we want writing in this newspaper, and that's who we need to be writing for and about. Uhuru. <laughs> When our, news, when our movement is relatively weak and uh, the party is really struggling to build the revolutionary leadership, the advanced detachment, the vanguard, that's when you find that when the movement now is strengthened, we got vanguard forces, now we're going to the community to involve the people in this process. And the vanguard, that's your job. That's to not to be able to go out and talk about you know, uh, African internationalism in some highfalutin way. You, is, you, you got African internationalism. You're, you're the translators now. You're the ones who translate that in the world so that people can understand it uh, uh, directly and immediately. So, and this newspaper has to be the vehicle for that. Uhuru. 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 Israeli too. Uhuru. Vanguard, Vanguard, we must lead. African people must be free. Vanguard, Vanguard, we must lead. African people must be free. Uhuru. So we are going to be breaking for lunch after I finish these announcements. And again, if you haven't picked up your checked in with registration and picked up your lunch tickets for today, I need you to head on back to registration. Uh, I want to also <clears throat> just say that go, you should go to the, cha the table of the office of the chairman to get your copy of the Burning Spear newspaper, and you can also pick up bundles there to sell to your area. Your, your area. <clears throat> you can also pre-order your copy of the published book of Chairman's Political Report to the Seventh Congress, which will be available in February of 2019. Uhuru. <clears throat> it doesn't say here. It's going to be $30 pre-order for 2019. <clears throat>
okay? And it's not too late to sign up for the Marcus Garvey Legacy Cruise <laughs> at the chairman's table. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> the cruise set sail on December 9th through the 16th from Miami and going throughout the Caribbean. So, and of course, just a reminder, this cruise is not some petty bourgeois cruise. We are out here, and the money that we are spending to book our rooms is going toward a fundraiser for the African Socialist International, building the party around the world. We need to be able to have flexibility for Comrade Louise Kinshasa to meet everywhere, and we also need to have the capacity to be everywhere to build the party so that we can make the revolution. <clears throat> And I have one more announcement. Tomorrow's gonna be one of those long days, like the day I gave my presentation, where we're gonna break for lunch and then come back for another presentation. And so uh, we're gonna accommodate you all by uh, offering food here. And it's gonna be a soul food dinner for Thursday evening. There's gonna be vegan and regular meal. So the, the vegans is just gonna be Cajun red and black beans and rice, collard greens, sweet potatoes, and hot water cone bread. And then for us people who eat meat, then we're gonna add some chicken onto that. <laughs> um, you can pre-order, and that's gonna be offered by Comrade Makeda, who's back there in the corner waving her hands. She's gonna be the preparer of the food. You can pre you can pre-order it today. Um, you do not have to pay anything, but it's gonna be ten dollars for the meal. So just go over to Comrade Makeda, put your name on the list that you want this dinner for tomorrow. She'll prepare it. You'll pay it for for it tomorrow. Okay, comrades, we are going to break for lunch. And what time is it now? It is 12.40. We are scheduled to be back at 1.30 to convene the next uh, half of the Congress, the fifth, um, the fifth day of the African People's Socialist Party Congress. Uhuru. Break. Uhuru. <laughs>